From AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, home of the Dallas Cowboys, it's the Blue-Gray All-American Bowl presented by Blue-Gray Football on the Impact Football Network. Hello there, everybody. My name is Ryan Castle, joined by Sean. Uh, Lim- How do you say your last name again? It's Glaginski, right? Saglinski. Sagl- Saglinski. I've, and, been, uh, I've been called worse. <laughs> <laughs> We're ready to go here tonight uh, for some all-American football, uh, all-star game here from AT&T Stadium in Arlington. The teams are uh, still warming up for the start of tonight's game, and we will uh, have a pregame interview for you down on the field here in just a moment as uh, high school players, high school seniors trying to get recruited to play football uh, at the next level have made their way from really all across the country here, Sean, and uh, this is a really great event put on by the Impact Football Network. Yeah, you know, Gus Bell with Blue Gray Football uh, does a tremendous job of not only gathering some of the more high-profile recruits uh, from all over the nation as well as some uh, kids that are a bit underneath the radar. Uh, and those are the kids you really want to, you know, keep an eye out for, you know, the Caleb Arnolds of the world, uh, JDW, or J.W. Maldaner. Uh, you know, these kids for the East, you know, bring a lot to the table. It'll be interesting uh, to see what they're able to deliver just in terms of the uh, kids that are more well known. You have a Cameron Petway in Auburn commit uh, who's playing for the East running back. Uh, you figure that he's going to gain chunks of yardage, you know, from the start of the first quarter to the end of the fourth. Uh, you look at the West, uh, just to keep things real brief and simple, their quarterback is uh, Luke Rubenzer. He's a Cal commit. Alongside him in the backfield is Vic N. We're also going to Cal. So, you know, they have a couple of uh, big name kids, and we'll be interested to see, you know, if given the opportunity either to take advantage on a big stage like this, Ryan. Yeah, and also, you know, real opportunity uh, for these kids to play their last high school football game in a stadium like this. Uh, a great opportunity for that as well. Yeah, we had the um, uh, media banquet last night, and all the different coaches uh, got up there and, and spoke with the kids, and I thought it was really, really cool to hear uh, Coach Al McCauley uh, from the East and. You know, he basically had said to the kids, hey, I'm like you. All of us are not going to play D1 ball. Uh, And he continued with the speech. This could be your last time out on the field. You know, make things happen. You know, this is a big stage. You're going to want to tell your grandkids about this at some point down the road. Uh, And I think the kids will take that message to heart and kind of seize the moment here. Yeah, no question about that. And uh, some great coaching staffs from these uh, squads as well. You take a look at the West squad. Their head coach is Mark McMillian, who – was in the NFL with the Philadelphia Eagles and Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, George Teague is their defensive coordinator, former safety with the Dallas Cowboys, also with the Green Bay Packers as well. The list kind of goes on from there. Of former NFL players that really are, for the most part, donating their time to these kids and to their development and uh, really investing in these kids' future. Yeah, Mark McMillan from the West, uh, head coach for the West, he did a tremendous job assembling his staff. That's not to say that Larry, or, uh, Larry Ryan's on the other side has not done so, but when you talk about McMillan, you're talking about a guy who's been through the NFL ranks and, uh, you know, played with the Eagles, the Chiefs, and the Niners at some uh, stages during his career. And I think that he provides some valuable knowledge to these kids. Hey, look, I've been where you are. I've made it to the next level. I've made it to the pro ranks. And for him to share some of his stories with the kids uh, and, and some of those experiences, I think will go a long ways in helping these kids get through this game and get through life in general. Larry Ryan's on the other side for the East. Just a tremendous man with the biggest heart and really cares about these kids. He preaches family a lot. Uh, and that's not just talking shop. I, I mean, he's there for these kids. He wants to get some of the lesser known names a chance to play D1 ball or whether it be D2 or D3. Uh, and I, I think he's a good representation of what blue gray football is all about. Well, we're certainly excited to be here on the uh, Impact Football Network, the broadcast power tonight by the Sportsgram Network. And, uh, Sean and I will be back. We'll talk more about some of these players in tonight's All-American Bowl. The Blue-Gray All-American Bowl here from AT&T Stadium will continue in a moment. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, 
I've always wanted to be. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Back here at AT&T Stadium, along with Sean Saglinski, I'm Ryan Castle here at AT&T Stadium, the Blue-Gray All-American Bowl, the uh, home of the Dallas Cowboys. The stadium roof is closed here at AT&T Stadium as we get ready for this All-American Bowl. The uh, blue, actually the team in the blue, I guess we should say, it's not actually the blue team, it's the East team down there on the field still warming up. And the uh, West team will be in the gray jerseys and blue pants. And uh, they have gone back to the locker room with their head coach, Larry Ryans. Talked about the uh, West coaching staff earlier, but the East coaching staff is uh, just as high profile with Cozy Coleman, their offensive coordinator, played with the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Arlen Harris, their running back coach. And, uh, Sean, as we take a look just at some of these rosters, both for the East and West, these things are just absolutely littered with uh, high-profile high school recruits that have, for the most part, uh, a lot of them have already been uh, recruited and committed to high-profile Division I programs. And uh, talk to us a little bit about some of the names that jump off the page there for you. Yeah, over the course of the game, I really think that we'll start to hit on some of the under-the-radar kids as, as they come up and make plays. I think there's an undeniable fact that these kids are hungry and you know want to use this platform to further their careers. Uh, but... You know, one of the names that jumps off the page, uh, or actually a couple, you know, we talked about Luke Rubenzer and, and um, Vic Inware going to Cal, but also at the top of the list you have Patrick Mahomes. We're really excited to get him on board. Unfortunately, he's got a banged up ankle, so he won't be out there. Um, nevertheless, he's heading to Texas Tech. Uh, he's going to be playing here in the South, uh, you know, in the very near future. He brought along with him his offensive lineman, uh, Castaneda, uh, Robert Castaneda. So uh, those are that's another big guy in the middle that you look for. Uh, I think that this is a, an opportunity for him to say, hey, look, I'm going to Texas Tech. You're not going to push me around on the offensive line. And, and I think that when they're going to run the ball, that it's going to be behind Castaneda. Yeah, you talk about Patrick Mahomes. It is very unfortunate we don't get to see him here tonight. Headed to Texas Tech, uh, but with that ankle injury, won't play here tonight. But you got to think that Cliff Kingsbury, their uh, head coach, is going to be really excited to get Patrick down there to Lubbock uh, starting next year. Yeah, he's a real super dynamic kid, ultra athletic, uh, and with the system that Kingsbury runs, he's a perfect fit. I I'm probably uh, it's more than likely that he's happy with him having a bad ankle that he's not going to be out there tonight. It's best for him to you know just kind of rest, get back, recoup, and, and be ready for the next level. Absolutely, and uh, well, you talk about good high school football here in the state. Patrick played at White House uh, here in the state of Texas, and uh, yesterday actually was the final day of the season in Texas high school football. They set a, an attendance record here in the state for the 5A Division I championship between Allen High School and uh, Pearland High School. Allen winning their second straight Division I 5A championship and uh, concluded a string of five championships won by Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex teams here in the state uh, in their high school football championships. But, Sean, really, Texas is not the only state highlighted here on these rosters. Uh, certainly the West squad is littered with kids from Texas, also from California and Louisiana and Arizona. And then when you look at the East squad, you've really got guys from all over, Kansas, Missouri, Alaska, British Columbia. These kids have come all over the place here to Arlington tonight to showcase their talents for uh, the many college coaches that will be watching our tape-delayed broadcast. Yeah, I think uh, a kid that to keep an eye on tonight 
uh, particularly for the East, is E.J. Moss, 6'4", linebacker out of Alabama. This kid is a physical presence. He passes the eye test. You look at him and walk him by and, hey, that's a football player. Uh, and his prospects for the next level uh, are looking to grow and, and build as it stands now. Ole Miss is on him. Kentucky. I don't think that he's necessarily ready to make a decision. I think if an Auburn from close to home were to approach him, he would jump at that type of thing. But I think that he's starting to explore his options. Uh, but he's one of the higher-profile kids, and I look for him to make plays at the second level and maybe get in the backfield to disrupt the passing game. So we will uh, certainly keep an eye on EJ, six foot four, 240-pounder, Asheville, Alabama, as his hometown, and uh, right in the middle of the heart of the SEC country. And you heard Sean say Ole Miss and Kentucky taking a look at him. It should be a great ball game here tonight, and not so much for the competitive atmosphere you would think. of. This is obviously an all-star game. These kids are just kind of um, hired mercenaries, I guess, if you will. They haven't played a lot together, but you have to get the idea that certainly at some point in this ball game, the competitive juices are going to start to flow, and we're going to see a lot of kids that want to come out here and win this football game just like they would any other. I think a driving force behind that is the coaching staffs as well. Larry Ryan has won the last two years to coach for the East, and I think he wants to extend that streak to three in a row. And I also, I also think the kids kind of feed off that type of energy. You know, this is more than an all-star game. This is more than an all-American game. You know, there's been some tight bonds that have been formed already, and no one wants to walk off this field um, without a W. And I think that's something that both coaches have, has, have emphasized over the course of the last couple of days. The weather's conditions here uh, in Dallas have not been terribly favorable so their time to practice and stuff was limited but that didn't prevent the coaching staffs from hitting the books uh, getting the kids together studying the plays and I think what you're going to see is a real finished product on the field with kids playing you know from the you know opening kickoff until the final seconds tick off the clock well we are certainly excited to get things going here from AT&T Stadium the lights are on with the uh, roof closed here tonight as the uh, Cowboys are obviously out of town. They're up in Landover, Maryland, playing the uh, Washington Redskins earlier today. And so the uh, stadium vacant, for not only for the high school football championships uh, earlier this weekend, but also for tonight's Blue-Gray All-American Bowl, presented by Blue-Gray Football and the Impact Football Network. We're certainly glad to have you with us for our coverage as we get a chance to look at some of the, uh, some of the next stars of college football here tonight. Already talked about several of these players, but uh, there's going to be several more as the night goes on that uh, we will certainly alert your attention to. And as we get ready for the opening kickoff of tonight's game, we'll take another break from AT&T Stadium. This is the Blue-Gray All-American Bowl on the Impact Football Network, powered by SportsGram. And uh, we will just keep it right here as the captains are now making their way out of the uh, tunnels, it appears. And they will head out towards midfield for the coin toss. The East squad coming out, they're going to be on the near sideline, I believe. Well, let's see. They actually might go over to the far sideline. And the West squad will be down over here towards us on the near sideline. And again... This is the Blue-Gray All-American Bowl, but it is featuring the East versus the West. The West will be in gray jerseys. The East will be in the blue jerseys, as you can see on the video screen right now. And, uh, from what I understand, Sean, let's try to just kind of educate our listeners, I guess, a little bit on this. These players, this is not the first taste they have had of uh, this blue gray there are regional combines that these players have to go through and some sort of vetting system to be able to get to this game and actually play in this game yeah what gus bell has created a system that we believe works really well you get kids from all over the nation you know that come to our various combines um uh, you know throughout the united states we have one you know a couple on the west coast one in la uh, one in the bay area uh, there's one up in massachusetts we have one in philadelphia as well as arizona we also have one coming up in uh, January in Florida. Um, so what 
we've created is this platform where these kids can come out, do some skill testing, you know, run through some drills, and how the things kind of panned out is if they catch our eye, they're invited back to participate in the Blue Gray All American game. So they're getting an opportunity that they wouldn't otherwise have. And you know what, you got to put in the work. If you put in the work and you perform, uh, then this is one of the biggest rewards. Yeah, no question about it. And really, even for the kids that don't have the uh, fortune to play in this ball game, still just coming to that regional combine, getting a taste of what it's like to go through something like that with college drills, um, get kind of that higher level atmosphere, higher level uh, competition. That's something good for those players as well. Yeah, and the real one of the real benefits, Ryan, is we spoke about the college coaches or the, the coaches that have been assembled for these kids to get to the next level in college and, and some of the NFL names. So they're getting top-notch training, uh, you know, in addition. And, and that's something you're not going to get or receive every day. So what Blue Gray football is presenting is, uh, you know, something that will further these uh, athletes' career on the field and, and then the student portions, you know, off the field in the classroom where, you know, you're learning discipline and things of that nature. You were talking earlier about the, the bonds that are created in this game despite the limited practice time and uh, just the limited time to be around each other. You could just kind of get the sense. We didn't get a chance to go down on the field before the game, but you could just get kind of the sense of the camaraderie that's been built between these teams and not only on their respective East and West squads, but also um, just kind of intermittently together. There's just a sense of family and community uh, between both of these teams here tonight. Yeah, it was interesting. We've been staying at the uh, Marriott uh, in Dallas-Fort Worth uh, on the south side, and, and they were really nice to accommodate us. And you get a nice inner uh, mixing of kids from both teams being able to go interact and um, to reiterate, you know, the weather conditions weren't ideal. I don't think the kids were able to get as much practice time as they would have liked. Same thing could be said about the coaching staff. But while they were inside, they made the best of the opportunities to, to hang out. And, and I think that that was cool for kids from California to hang out with kids from New York, uh, you know, kids from Kansas to hang out with kids from Oregon. And, you know, you, you kind of get the sense that some budding lifelong friendships have started here. And the coin toss at midfield. It'll be the East squad winning the toss they elect to receive in the end zone to our left. And so we will see... The E squad with a football first, and they will be on offense to begin the game. Again, Larry Ryans is their head coach. Cozy Coleman, their offensive coordinator. Arlen Harris, their running back coach. Keith Washington is their defensive coordinator, formerly of the Baltimore Ravens and New York Giants. Al McCauley is their linebacker coach, played at Temple. And we are just about ready to go for this Blue-Gray All-American Bowl. Here from AT&T Stadium in Arlington, home of the Dallas Cowboys, who one week from tonight will be playing a winner-go-home NFC East championship game, de facto championship game. And we are ready to go down to the sideline. Corrine Lewis is down there with the starting quarterback of the West God West squad, Luke Rubenzer. Corrine, you take it away. Hey, guys. Like you just said, I am here on the sideline with quarterback standout Luke Rubenzer. He's for the West. And uh, Luke comes from Scottsdale, Arizona. And uh, he just recently committed with the California Bears, so we are so excited for him. And, Luke, how's your experience been this week in Dallas? Uh, it's been great. Um, you know, there's a lot of good players, a lot of great coaches around. Uh, you know, but definitely the highlight, highlight of the uh, trip so far has been, uh, you know, practicing and uh, getting ready for the game with Vic. Uh, you know, he's going to be my running back up there at Cal for the next four years. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm really, really excited about that. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll have a great year together. That's great. And what can we look forward to uh, seeing you do tonight? Uh, just spreading the ball around. Uh, you know, we got a lot of athletes. You know, got good running backs, good receivers. Um, spreading the ball around. Hopefully I'll get to use my feet a little bit. All right, well, we're excited. Good luck. Have a great time. All right. Take care. Back to you, Ryan. All right, Corrine. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we are ready for... The national anthem from AT&T Stadium.
All right, the national anthem from AT&T Stadium. The teams are already out on the field, and we're ready to go. The opening kickoff of this blue-gray All-American Bowl. The East squad will get the football first on offense. And back deep to return for the East squad is Malcolm Lee, six foot two running back out of St. Thomas More in the British Columbia. And also waiting back deep, Lonnie Johnson from Merrillville, Indiana, six foot 175 pounds. Johnson and Lee waiting at their eight yard line. Matt Mars is the kicker for the West squad from River Road, Texas. And he will be kicking from right to left. And the Blue Gray All-American Bowl is underway. Low squib kick that will be taken by an up back at the 34 yard line and returned out across the 35 to around the 38 yard line. And the tackle made by the West number 44, Addison Kirkland from Corrigan Camden High School in Texas. And here comes the East offense starting at their 38 yard line. Now we do not have starting lineups for these uh, squads, but we'll try to tell you some of the key players out there. Lonnie Johnson will be lined up wide to the left, a shotgun set. And this is the first snap of the game. Quarterback keeper across the 40 out to the 42-yard line. And that is Caleb Arnold from Derby, Kansas on the keeper for a gain of about five up to the 43-yard line. It'll be second down and five coming up. Yeah, Caleb was penciled in as a defensive back due to his athleticism. Coach Larry Ryan says, hey, I got to get the kid in this ball's hands, or the kid in this ball's hand, in his hands. And, and I think what you'll see tonight is Caleb running a lot of stuff from the Wildcat formation, uh, and you'll be able to see some of that talent and his physical presence that he provides. And whistles before the snap of the football, a penalty flag, our first penalty of the game. And it is against the East. We'll move them back and take away the yards that Arnold gained on first down, bring up second and 10. Now something interesting is the scoreboards here at AT&T Stadium are not operational for this game. They're keeping the time down on the field. And so we, to the best of our ability, will have to keep the time up here. You can see it or you will see it uh, on the screen intermittently throughout the game. So Caleb Arnold is starting the game at quarterback, and as Sean mentioned, listed as a defensive back, but such a good athlete that Coach Ryans needed to get him in at quarterback. Two running backs here, play action for Arnold, back three steps, now flushes out of the pocket off to the left, and nowhere to go for Caleb Arnold. He's brought down in the backfield, and a great play made defensively by the West squad right there. Yeah, Cameron Petway in the backfield picks up a block for Arnold, buys him a little time, but after that the protection breaks down and he has nowhere to go, has to kind of just eat the play. And that was Ryan Alvarez who was in on the sack. Six foot, 195 pounder from Mesa Verde, California. Timeout called by the East. It'll be third down and about 15 after the timeout and a great play made defensively by the West up front. Yeah, I think the, the West has a lot of you know, talent up front. And, and that's something I think both coaching staffs have talk about, particularly Mark McMillan. He says, hey, you know, we got a, you know, some guys that can really get after the ball on defense. And you saw that right there with them putting pressure on and getting into the backfield. So Alvarez on the sack and uh, really pressure off both edges right there from the West. And you mentioned the size that they have up front. Sean, you take a look down there. And they are just massive up front. Zach Singer from Bishop Gorman High School in Nevada. Six foot two, 285, and can really, really run. He's got a great motor. And the East is going to bring four receivers to the right on third and 15 from their 34-yard line. Snap back to Arnold on third down, and he is going to go down again back at the 25-yard line. 
Another sack by the West. And this time it was 35, Derek Terrell from Utah making the sack. There is a penalty flag down back at around the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Khalil Reese also got in on the play there, and, and he's one of the more excitable players. I think you'll see that uh, as the game wears on. And the offensive line for the East struggling in the early going. And that penalty was against the West, so it gives the East a second shot here. Third down and nine. They need the 48 for the first down, and Arnold out of the shotgun with a snap back. And again, pressure rolls off to the right and has a man all alone, but it is dropped at the 44-yard line by Lonnie Johnson. Would have been a first down and more if Johnson's able to hold on. The pass was on the money, but instead it'll be fourth down and time to punt for the East. But you see right there the mobility of Arnold to escape the pressure in the pocket and throw with accuracy on the run. Yeah, he bought himself a few extra seconds, was able to keep his wits about him. Saw Johnson downfield, just wasn't able to hold onto the ball. I believe that Johnson will redeem himself. The coaches were real hyped about him. So look for him to come back and make a play. Perhaps Arnold goes back to him on the next series and, and builds that confidence back up. And I believe this is Sean Young kicking. 43, six foot, 180 pounder from St. Petersburg, Florida. Good snap and he gets away a high spiraling kick. This is a beauty. And backpedaling and muffing the kick at the 15-yard line. It's loose at around the 20, and it looks like the East was the first to recover. Let's wait and see. And it is recovered by the West, so fortunately the West is able to hop back on that muffed punt, and now we will see the West squad on offense for the first time tonight. Yeah, this will be our first opportunity, I think, to see the Cal connection. Luke Rubenzer and Vic Enware, um, in talking with some of the coaches' staff, they didn't really let us in on a lot of things, but I know that there has been some plays employed on behalf of the West where they're going to try and reach into the bag of tricks. So let's see if that happens on the first play or, or sometime in the first half. Rubenzer is going to be under center, so a bit of a different look for the West as opposed to the East. Here in the early going, a strong... I left, play action, Rubenzer rolls to the right, has time, throws on the run across the formation incomplete. And a great play made defensively by the East. That was the safety. And let's see here, Connor Bomstad from Timberland, Missouri making the play. It'll be second and 10. Bomstad brought the boomstick on that one. Maybe receiver heard some footsteps. Couldn't, couldn't hold on the ball. Uh, on where is in the ball game as the deep back, and uh, both of those headed to the Pac-12. Rubenzer and on where next year to play at Cal University. Now Rubenzer will be in the shotgun with two running backs and two receivers. And Rubenzer takes the snap on second and 10 and will hand it off on a left side sweep across the 25 and sliding out to the 26 yard line. Richard Doctor got the carry and he gets a gain of about eight on second down, brings up a third and short. Yeah, Doctor got to the edge on that one, uses explosiveness to pick up eight, nine yards, big chunk there, creates a manageable situation to pick up the first down and keep the chains moving. And how about the athletic play by Rubenzer? Not an easy snap to handle, a bit high and still able to bring it down and put it in the belly of Doctor for the eight yard gain. Rubenzer, a part of a very talented quarterback class in the state of Arizona in 2014, along with Kyle Allen, who's headed at the midterm to Texas A&M to enroll as an Aggie for Kevin Sumlin. Rubenzer out of the shotgun on third down and two with a snap back, back three steps. The pressure is arriving immediately. And Rubenzer goes down back at the 16-yard line. Both defensive lines playing well in the early going, and the West squad will be forced to punt. Yeah, Larry Ryan's made mention of the fact that he believes this is where the game's going to be won with his defensive uh, front four and linebackers at the second level. Look for them to be making plays throughout. And now Matt Mars will go back to punt. Michael Fellers is back deep to return the punt. 
from Miami East High School in Ohio. It's not a very good punt. Does take a west bounce and rolls dead at the 43-yard line of the west. And so East will have a very good starting field position. Here in the first quarter, no score in the Blue-Gray All-American Bowl. And both teams having to punt on their first possession. So the defense are playing strong on both sides here in the early going. Which is a bit of a surprise, I would say. Coming in, you take a look at the rosters, a lot of the talent is on the offensive side, but the defensive lines have played very well. I think things will start to click a little bit more for both offenses. These players on the outside of the skill positions are far too athletic to be held under wraps for much longer. Arnold with a first down handoff to Cameron Petway. And he stopped in the backfield for a loss of two. It'll be second down and 12 back at the 42 yard line. The defense is playing very well for both teams so far here in the first quarter. East huddles up and now comes to the line of scrimmage, second and 12. And Arnold will be in an empty gun with four receivers bunched up to the right side of the formation. Takes the snap, throws it right, and it's incomplete. And the West had that play scripted out very well. Bit of an errant snap threw off the timing of that play as well. It'll be third and 12 coming up. Looks like they had a little bubble screen set up for Cameron Petway. Get the ball into his hands out in space. See if he can make things happen. In that instance, Arnold's got to put the ball on target or, or at least give him an opportunity. So to bring up a third and 12, neither team has converted a third down to this point. Slots on both sides are running back to Arnold's left. And a snap back on third and 12. He's got all day. Now the pressure from up the middle. And he throws it on the run towards the sideline incomplete. Intended for Nico Pless from North Carolina. And Pless caught the ball out of bounds, so it'll be fourth and 12, and the East squad is going to punt it again. Boy, again, good pressure right there from the West squad coming right up the middle that time on a stunt. And able to get to Arnold and force the quarterback to the right to throw the ball on the run and wasn't quite able to get it to a receiver. And now the punt from Sean Young. This one is a beauty. High spiraling kick. And it will bounce at the six and bounce back up to the eight-yard line where it is killed by the east. Boy, a great punt by Sean Young. Pins the West squad back deep. And they'll start their second offensive possession inside the 10-yard line at the nine. Special teams often get overlooked, but you can't complain with the job that Sean Young's doing. Pins them back inside. Uh, underneath their own goalposts, really, and, and Sean Young is, is changing field position, giving the East the chance to put some pressure on the ball right now, maybe really try and get after Luke, Luke Rubenzer in, in the backfield and get that ball back here, maybe at midfield. Neither team has run the ball very much so far. Rubenzer will be in the pistol with four receivers. And now moves the running back from his right and now to his left shoulder. On first down from the nine yard line, Rubenzer with a quick throw on a slant across the middle, incomplete. Throwing a bit behind his intended receiver, Jake Wittenberg. It'll be second and 10. Jake Wittenberg's a really talented kid. Uh, coaching staff for the East, as a matter of fact, was talking about him and, and raving about what he uh, is able to bring to the table. Expect him to be in the offense quite a bit this afternoon and, and the rest of the evening. Trying to target him right there on a quick slant and Rubenzer just not able to get the ball there on the target. And Rubenzer will now come under center. On an eye right, two receivers. With a snap on second down and the handoff. And trying the right side, not much. Maybe the line of scrimmage and that's all. And as they unstack, let's see who that was on the carry. Believe it was Doctor again, Richard Doctor on the carry for a gain of maybe a yard. It'll be third down and nine. So again, total yardage so far in this first half. Not a whole lot to speak about. Both defenses very stingy, and 
you would think a lot of that has to do with the fact that these offenses haven't had a ton of time to uh, prepare for this game, playing together. Rubens are out of the gun on third and nine. They need the 20 for the first down. And the snap is back on third down. Pretty good protection. Rolls to the right. Slips out of one sack and now goes down. Back at the six-yard line. As the protection just broke down, the East squad able to get there, and the West will be forced to punt once again. Pressure from the defensive line of the East has been relentless this far, really creating a lot of problems for Rubenzer. They're going to have to get on the sideline with the coaching staff, figure out some things, maybe uh, keep Enware in the backfield for some, some added protection just to give him a few more minutes to look downfield. And now the West squad's punter, Matt Mars, backed up. Takes the snap, gets away the punt. And it is going to be downed at around the 30-yard line. So about a 38-yard punt or so for the West squad and the East squad. You know, you mentioned special teams getting overlooked. That's typical in a regular high school game, but particularly in an All-American Bowl such as this, you would expect special teams to be Maybe even more overlooked than usual, but the East squad really doing a great job on special teams. They've got great field position here to start this drive. Let's see if the East can take advantage here. Just inside the 30-yard line, perhaps to take a shot downfield at this, at this stage. It's worth, it's worth taking a long look at just to open this game up a little bit more. Four-man front for the West. Arnold out of the gun, and they'll hand it off to Johnson. Coming straight ahead inside the 30 and sliding down to around the 28, maybe the 27-yard line for a gain of three. So they've had Johnson lined up. I beg your pardon, that is uh, Dakota Finstad. Dakota, F or Malcolm Lee, Malcolm Lee, yes, you're right, Malcolm Lee. They've got two number sevens, one on offense, one on defense, but Malcolm Lee, the one with the carry there. And here is a handoff again to Lee. Started left, cut right, got inside the 30 to about the 28-yard line. It'll be third down and about eight coming up. Yeah, Lee's uh, from uh, north of the border in, in Canada, and uh, actually British Columbia. We have uh, quite a few players on the roster um, from Canada, and, and Noah Usherwood being another one. There's a real opportunity for these kids to come down here see how you know American football is played and, and if they can bring some of those principles back to Canada great as a matter of fact blue gray football is planning to go out there next year do some camp and combine so keep an eye on out for that and on third down and eight the East squad going on a QB draw with Arnold picked up a couple to the 26 yard line each about seven yards short of the first down and the East squad is going to attempt a field goal here with Sean Young who in pregame warm-ups showed he had plenty of leg for what should be about a 42-yarder or so. The officially a 43-yarder from the right hash. Caleb Arnold is the holder. And the snap is a low one put on the tee by Arnold and it's blocked, picked up by Young and he's gonna be tackled way short of the first down. And the West squad able to get to that field goal attempt. And the, the score will remain scoreless. Yeah, Lajewan Cunningham comes right up the middle, reaches out his arms, full extension, bats the ball down, turns around, has a celebration with his teammates. That was the first big play of the game. Time for the West to put something together, string a couple of first downs and switch this field. And this is the best starting field position of the game for the West right here. Great play on special teams. That's been the story so far of this Blue-Gray All-American Bowl. And now we'll see if the West can capitalize. Luke Rubenzer is their quarterback. And uh, Coleman Key might actually be in there right now. I believe that's number six in the shotgun. With a snap back, he'll throw on first down, lofts it down the left sideline, incomplete. Intended for Taylor Jackson, six foot three, 195 pounder from Texarkana. It'll be second down and 10. 
Coleman Key is a nice looking prospect. Stands about 6'4", 6'5", range, well over 200 pounds out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Head in Colorado State's got a cannon for an arm. Look for him to distribute the ball down the field. So second and 10 at the 31 yard line. And Key will be in the shotgun. Double slot here with a tight end on the right. And the snap back, pretty good protection. Throws across the middle, and that is incomplete. Intended that time, I believe, for Ahmad Mohammed. It looked like number three. No, number nine, they say, Taylor Jackson. Running a crossing pattern across the middle, and it'll be third down and ten. Yeah, Key let him just a little bit too much. I understand you want to give your receiver the opportunity to catch the ball and get upfield, but just had a little bit too much on that ball, a little bit too much zip. And checking into the lineup here for the West, Zachary Mitchell from Klein Forest, Texas, at the running back spot. Zach Sterling coming to the sidelines. Third down and 10. For the West, neither offense has converted a third down yet. And Key will be in the shotgun, slot right, and two running backs. And the snap back on third down, back five steps, standing, looking, dumps it off in the left flat, caught, and a first down out across the 45. Catch and run by Ray Foreman from Rusk, Texas, showing his ability to catch the ball out of the backfield. And the West with a nice gain out across their 45-yard line for the first first down of the game for either team. Yeah, you like what Foreman did there. Catches the ball, gets upfield, and instead of going out of bounds, turns it up, uh, delivers a blow before going out of bounds, and picks up an extra few yards on that play, Ryan. 17-yard gain for Foreman on that catch out of the backfield. First down for the West from their 48-yard line. And now Coleman Key will come under center and an eye right. Snap, and they will toss sweep coming right side. This is Mitchell, and Mitchell cuts it upfield across the 50 to the east 48-yard line for a gain of four. It'll be second down and six. And, you know, another thing, Sean, is that not only are these players getting a chance to experience a new system that they uh, would normally experience on their high school team, but the West is out there running several different systems. They've come under center. They've been in the shotgun, the pistol. And so a chance for these quarterbacks and receivers and running backs and the offensive line, for that matter, to experience a lot of different offensive formations. Yeah, it seems like Coach Mark McMillan uh, handed over the reins, so to speak, to offensive coordinator Vernon Turner. And, and that's what you're seeing out there is, is them experimenting with some things, seeing what's going to work best to get this ball moving in the right direction and down the field. Key will be under center, second down and about six. And another toss this time to the right side, and he's going to throw it. Looking back to the left side of the field, throws it up into traffic. It's caught at the 31-yard line. Running away 20, huge block at the 15, and a touchdown for the West. Yeah, Coleman Key with the block down the field. It was a pass back to the quarterback. Spoke a little bit earlier about the West. Wanted to do a couple of trick plays. Appeared as if the pass was to Coleman after he ended the ball off. Wasn't, wasn't able to come down with it, but threw a key block there. Spring the touchdown. And that was Mason Sonier, the tight end from Orangefield, Texas, that made the catch and the run for the touchdown. 46-yard scoring pass. And I believe it was Vic Onweir who threw the ball. Yep, it was Vic. He's going to give Luke Rubenzer a run for his money over there at Cal. <laughs> That's right. Put himself on the depth chart. The extra point is up and good. And we have our first score of the Blue-Gray All-American Bowl. Quite unconventionally, it's 7-0, the West with the lead. So still in the first quarter here from AT&T Stadium in Arlington. 
And a touchdown pass from Vic Onweir to Mason Sonier. How I believe you say that. Six foot five, 235 pound tight end. And that was uh, just a jump ball up into the middle of the field. Sonier at six foot five is going to win most of those. And then a great block downfield by Coleman Key to uh, break him loose for the touchdown. Seven to nothing West, and they will kick it off. Lonnie Johnson waiting back deep. Here comes the kick. High end over end, short kick. Will be taken up at the 21 yard line by Johnson. Comes straight up the middle. Look out, he's loose. 40 45 midfield, running away from everybody. 30 20, Lonnie Johnson. 79 yard touchdown return. Mama, there goes that man. We talked about a little bit earlier. Coaching staff was raving about Lonnie Johnson a little bit earlier. He gets some open space, gets to the edge, and no one's going to catch him from behind. What an electrifying return by Johnson. How about that for an answer? And the extra point still to come for the E squad to tie the game at seven. 79 yards on the kickoff return for a touchdown. Snap is low, Arnold able to get it on the tee and the kick is up and good from Sean Young. So our score here in the first quarter of the Blue-Gray All-American Bowl, the East 7 and the West 7. Our coverage of the Blue-Gray All-American Bowl from AT&T Stadium in Arlington will continue in a moment. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. Face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty. Time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately. Learn the body language and spot a stroke fast. Welcome back to AT&T Stadium here in Arlington with Ryan Castle, Sean Siglinski. We're ready to go for the ensuing kickoff after a very great return from Lonnie Johnson. Took the ball at the 21-yard line and went virtually untouched. 79 yards to the end zone. To tie the score at seven, the Blue-Gray All-American Bowl here from AT&T Stadium. We're certainly glad to have you with us. And Sean Young will kick it off left to right. Both offenses got off to a slow start, but it seems as, the, as if the kids are settling down now and we've had 14 points combined uh, in about, I'd say, the last 15 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 seconds here. Yeah. So it looks like we're in a nice little rhythm. So Young getting ready to kick it off. And the West waiting back deep at around the 10-yard line. It's a high end over end pooch kick that will be taken at the 36-yard line and returned up the left sideline and breaking out of a few tackles is the return man. And finally tackled inside the east 30-yard line at around the 26. And let's see if we can get the number on that return guy. It was Sean Jones, 6'2", 228-pound wide receiver from Jasper, Louisiana. And that was just uh, kind of a high end over in pooch kick. I think the east was kind of hoping that the west would call for a fair catch. And Jones decided to return it and got a great return all the way to the east 28-yard line. And that's where the West will start. And this is Coleman Key once again under center, I left formation. And a handoff is to Ray Foreman trying the left side, gets inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. And that's a gain of five for Foreman on first down. Oh, 
So second down and five as West breaks the huddle. And they are going to have three running backs with Key under center. No receivers in this formation. On second and five. And the handoff is to the deep man, Doctor. And Doctor can't get away from the tackle. Great job of wrapping up there by the east. Chase Rudzik from Kansas able to make the tackle. Linebacker, gain of about a yard right there by Doctor. It'll be third down and four. And let's see here some type of a stoppage down on the field. This may be the end of the first quarter. And it is, and we are ready to go down to the sidelines. Corrine Lewis is standing by with a player from the E-Squad. Corrine, you take it away. Thanks, Ryan. I am so excited about this young man running back, Cameron Petway. He has been killing it in the state of Alabama and recently committed to Auburn University, one of my most favorite teams. So how much fun have you been having out there, Cameron? Uh, I've been having a lot of fun out here. Um, tonight and also during this week practicing with the guys and you know it's just been a good experience that's great how does it feel to be competing with the best players in the nation oh, it feels good to be competing against the best in the nation just knowing that um i was picked also as one of the best in the nation oh, that's great and uh what can we expect from you in the second half um a lot of big runs and uh, some excitement in the second half all right looking forward to it thank you good luck all right back to you guys thanks corinne <laughs> And uh, Cameron Petway, as Corrine mentioned, headed to Auburn. He'll be a part of that stable of running backs for Gus Malzahn behind Heisman finalist Trey Mason. And uh, what a fine addition he'll be to that offense as uh, Auburn getting ready to play in the BCS National Championship game in about two weeks. Meanwhile, the West with great field position here, but they're looking at a third down and about five as the teams flip-flop. And now the West going from left to right. Penalty flag at this snap here, and the handoff will be good enough for a first down to around the 16-yard line, but we'll have to wait and see on the penalty flag here. And this is going to be some type of illegal shift. Yep, false start against the offense, and so that play will not count. It'll be third down and about nine instead. Now, that's one thing that you could probably expect, expect a lot of in an All-American game such as this is procedure penalties on the offensive line, but we haven't seen a lot of that so far. These teams playing very well together in their limited time to practice. I think that speaks to the coaching staff, too. Mark McMillan did a good job of getting these kids prepared in, in a short time and without a lot of continuity you'd expect there to be some sloppy play, but for the most part, I, th I think the kids are, you know, sticking with their assignments and, and we're getting a good brand of football here. A third down and nine for the West. And Luke Rubenzer's back in there at quarterback, looking right, throwing right, incomplete. Rubenzer unable to connect with James Maiden from Saxe, Texas. It's going to be fourth down and nine, and... The ball is right around that area of the field where you would consider possibly going for it. And it looks like that's what the West might do here. Fourth down and nine at the 28-yard line. Expect Rubenzer to, at some point, go back and try and connect with Maiden. He's one of the other high-profile players we have in this game, heading to Rice. He'll be staying close to home for his college ball, but he's far too talented to be kept under wraps for much longer. Four receivers in this formation. Rubens are on fourth down and nine with a snap back. He's got all day, and now the pocket collapses, spins away to the right, throws it on the run, and that is caught up at the 21-yard line. It's going to be short of the first down, though. The ball was caught there by uh, number 15. I do not see on the roster here. I might have seen the number wrong. 19, I beg your pardon. Jake Wittenberg made the catch. Yeah, Wittenberg helping out his quarterback there. Protection broke down. He came back to the ball, uh, presented himself as a target. Unfortunately, wasn't enough for the first down. Yeah, that uh, time Wittenberg having to come back to the ball, and that forced his route to come short of the first down. And so the East is going to take over first down at their 20.
And the East right now have J.W. Maldaner in there at quarterback. And he carries the ball over the left side for a loss of one back to the 20. It'll bring up second down and 11. This is the first time we've seen the East offense on the field in a while. Remember they had the 79-yard kickoff return for a touchdown from Lonnie Johnson. Be interested to see what uh, Maldaner can get uh, done here. More of a traditional type quarterback, where as you saw Arnold running a lot of the wildcat formation, perhaps uh, they settle things down here with the passing game. And Maldaner dropping back, spins out of a sack. Now with some time as he rolls right, throws it on the run, incomplete. Pretty good coverage back there. The intended receiver was Lonnie Johnson, I believe. And, uh, boy, what an arm from J.W. Maldaner as he was rolling to the right. Really got a lot behind that pass. And a bit too much as he overthrew his target. It'll be third down and 11. Johnson was on his horse trying to catch up to that pass. Uh, but, yes, Maldaner showed some uh, good creativity rolling out of the pocket and, and at least giving Johnson an opportunity. So third and 11 here for the East squad. 7-7 seven to seven is our score, early second quarter from AT&T Stadium in Arlington. And Maldaner out of the shotgun, two receivers and two running backs, and here comes the pressure off the edge. Maldaner's in trouble, and he goes down back at the 18-yard line. And the sack made on the play by Ryan Alvarez, six-foot linebacker from Mesa Verde, California, and it's fourth down and long for the East, and they'll have to punt. Alvarez is a name that you've called a couple of times today, Ryan. It, it seems like uh, he's got a good understanding of what's expected to him, and, and he's creating some havoc. Yeah, he's been in the backfield on nearly every play. And now Sean Young will have to go back to punt. And just barely gets the punt away. It's not a very good one. It was under a lot of pressure, and this one's going to roll out of bounds at the 20-yard line. So it winds up being just a five-yard punt as the West got a lot of pressure on Young there and forced the bad punt, and the West is going to have great starting field position here with the score tied 7-all. Yeah, Young was kind of handcuffed on that, wasn't able to you know, gather the ball in and was lucky to get that play off, get it downfield versus coming up with the safety or, or actually turning the ball over and giving up seven points. So he made the best out of a potentially ter terrible you know, situation. So now the West with a football. Luke Rubenzer in the shotgun with two running backs and two receivers. And he will hand the ball off on first down. Doctor with a huge hole over the left side inside the 15 and finally brought down at around the 11-yard line. But a good burst of speed from Richard Doctor. And he's able to pick up eight yards. It'll be second and two coming up. Yeah, Troy Lane coming up from his spot in the secondary to make a good open field tackle. Otherwise, Doctor ends up in the end zone for six. So the West trying to capitalize off of great starting field position. And Rubenzer will be in the shotgun. Two receivers and two running backs on second down and two at the east 12-yard line. Rubenzer with a snap back. This time he'll hand it off again. And another burst right up the middle from Richard Doctor inside the five. He goes for a first down. It'll be first down and goal at the four-yard line. Yeah, Doctor didn't start the game, but he seemed to fit into his role of, of you know, kind of coming off the bench and providing a spark. All of a sudden, West is in business inside the five-yard line. And Doctor will now come back to the sideline. Yeah, he doesn't look like he's happy to be on the sideline. He's right in the coaching staff here. I'm sure he's eager to get back in and finish off this drive. And Rubenzer is going to come under center here on first and goal at the four. Strong right formation, and he will hand it off to Onweir, and Onweir broke out of a tackle and now comes to the right side and is able to get uh, some of that negative yardage back. Ends up being pushed out of bounds at around the six-yard line, and that's a loss of about two. It'll bring up second and goal, but you see the physicality there 
uh, Vaughn, we were able to escape out of that initial arm tackle and then get to the edge. Yeah, he showed some determination there. Was faced up against three players from the east. Ultimately, uh, Dakota Finstad drove him out of bounds. But you like the determination from Manway there. So it'll be second and goal for the west here. Score tied at seven. And Rubenzer will be in the shotgun. Two receivers, two running backs. Sonier the tight end. Snap back to Rebenzer, fakes the handoff, and now will pitch it. And Onweir made the first guy miss at the five and down to the two-yard line. Vic Onweir with the option on the right side and gets down to the two. It'll be third and goal from that spot. So a bit of an interesting play design there. They faked the inside handoff to Doctor, who's had success running in between the tackles. And then run the option right with the two Cal commits, Rubenzer and Onweir. And now it'll be third and goal from the one. Ball at the right hash. And Rubenzer is under center. Onweir the deep back on third and goal. Rubenzer with a snap, and uh, something happened up there with a the snap. This might be a penalty against the offensive line here. Yep, false start against the offense. Looked like it was an illegal snap by the center. And so third and goal at the one is going to become much more difficult. Third down and goal back up at the six-yard line. Tough place to take a penalty there, Ryan. They were knocking right on the doorstep. Uh, it looked like they had their big package in there, and now they're going to have to switch and maybe spread things out a little bit more. And it looks like timeout is going to be called here. Timeout by the East. About midway through this second quarter, our score here from AT&T Stadium, the East 7 and the West 7. And the West knocking on the door. But, Sean, what have you liked so far from uh, some of the names we've seen? Who stood out to you so far in this Blue-Gray All-American Bowl? Well, you, I expected big things for Luke Rubenzer. He's not having a lot of time in the pocket, but he has shown some mobility in, in trying to create some things. And that's something that at the next level, I, I think that he's going to need to do in the Pac-12 for him to be able to show him now that. I, I think the coaching staff at Cal will be, you know, taking a long look at some of this film and saying, okay, hey, you know, this kid's got some tools. There's a reason why we recruited him. Same thing goes for Vic Enwer. He's had a couple of plays where he's tried to create something out of nothing. But when you're one on three, you know, you're not going to have as much success as you'd hope for. But, again, I talked about his determination before, and, and I think that's something that's really ringing true so far in the first half, at least in terms of the things that we're seeing from the West. And, again, both defenses playing very well, typically in these All-American games and All-Star games you see high scoring, but both defenses have played magnificently so far. And the East trying to get a stop here on third and goal from the six-yard line. The West out of the timeout, will come to the line of scrimmage. Rubenzer at the quarterback position. Zachary Mitchell is in it running back along with Doctor. On third and goal at the six. Slot right for Rubenzer who gets the snap, looking left, throws it, and it's caught at the one by Doctor. He, it goes into the end zone, touchdown. Rubenzer from six yards away finds Richard Doctor for the score. And West has the lead back. Yeah, Doctor with a nice job of looking the ball right into his hands, securing it, crossing the goal line. He was a late addition to our blue-gray uh, football American bowl here. Uh, but it looks like, uh, you know, the coaching staff and, and some of our, you know, assistants that helped through the process, you know, picked up a gem in him and getting him out there and, and letting him showcase his abilities. And now Mars for the extra point. It is up and it is good. And the West able to take advantage of good field position. A 20-yard scoring drive capped off with a six-yard touchdown pass from Luke Rubenzer to Richard Doctor. 14-7, the West leads. This is our coverage of the third annual Blue-Gray All-American Bowl on Impact Football Network, powered by SportsGram.
Back here at AT&T Stadium for the uh, Blue-Gray All-American Bowl. We're in the second quarter, about midway through the second quarter. And the West with their second offensive touchdown, this time Luke Rubenzer with a touchdown pass to Richard Doctor. His second touchdown, or I beg your pardon, that is his first touchdown pass. The other touchdown pass was actually thrown by Vic Inweir. 46-yarder to Mason Sonier on a running back pass. And now the West leading 14-7. will kick it off to the East. Let's see if they kick it at Lonnie Johnson here. He's already got a 79-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. And here's the kickoff from Mars. It's an onside kick, and not able to keep it in bounds is the West. Just a little pooch kick to the right side, and the West trying to get there to swat the ball back into play and weren't able to do so. And so the East now will have great starting field position. So that time electing not to kick the ball deep to Johnson, instead trying to perhaps recover a bit of an onside kick. It uh, backfires, and the East will start up at their own 46-yard line, trailing 14-7. to Yeah, Coach Mark McMillan from the West looking to really kind of surprise the East there and, and almost pulled off a, a nice little play. Unfortunately, it didn't work out well. J.W. Maldaner back in the game at quarterback, and on first down, he oversails the intended receiver. That was Darius Aguirre from Phoenix, Arizona. Tried to set up the bubble screen to the left, and Maldaner unable to get the ball on target. Second and 10 coming up. Maldaner, six foot four, 190 pounds from Salina Central High School in Kansas. A very wiry quarterback back there. Where's the number 16? Here's the snap back, and a lot of pressure. Now Daner able to escape and now is brought down back behind the line of scrimmage. That tackle made by the West's number 36, Tramal, Tramal Ivy from Muskogee, Oklahoma. Six foot five defensive end, 230 pounder. And Ivy got there in a hurry. It'll be third down and 10. Ivy's another interesting player in, in terms of his prospects at the next level. He's getting a lot of looks from uh, schools all over, uh, you know, the South, uh, Midwest. He projects as, you know, a defensive end, perhaps a linebacker. I mean, they might tinker with him a little bit there, but he's playing D1 ball next year. And Maldana with the completion over on the right side, again to Aguirre. And Aguirre able to pick up three yards to the 49-yard line, brought down well shy of the first down. And it will bring up fourth down here. There is an injured West squad player down on the play. Something that you uh, never want to see happen. It looks like Derek Terrell, one of their defensive ends. Good thing about Blue Gray football is we have a top-notch training staff, so I'm sure that he'll get his attention uh, as needed and will provide updates every step of the way. The uh, training staff out looking at him right now at around the 42-yard line. Fourteen to seven is our score. The West squad with the lead, and it looks like they're going to bring Terrell to his feet. Appears to be something on the right side of the lower knee or ankle. Yeah, it looks like their wide receiver coach J.J. McCleskey's out there helping him out, and comes as no surprise. McCleskey's just a, a guy with a great heart. Cares a lot about these kids. Uh, one of the first guys out there just to make things, sure that things are okay. So Terrell able to get to the sideline, and they'll take a good look at him. Meanwhile, fourth down and seven means that the East squad will have to punt the ball back to the West. Here's the snap. It's a good one. And another high, beautiful punt. And it will be taken backpedaling at the 11-yard line. And the return out across the 10 up to the 13-yard line, and that's about it. 
And that return by Devin Stubblefield from St. Louis High School in Hawaii. Stubblefield is staying close to, uh, to home for his college ball. Uh, committed to Hawaii, will be playing for the Rainbows. Uh, again, you know, we mentioned Young a couple times before. Here he's are, uh, you know, booming another kick and pinning the West back on their own side of the field, and they're starting from the 14-yard line. Now, what a weapon that is. I mean, you can have a good punter like that that can really flip-flop field position, and that's what the East have. First down for the West from their 14-yard line. And Rubenzer under center, play action, seven-step drop, and they try to set up the screen. The ball is caught and dropped immediately by the East is Vic Inweir. No gain on the play, brought down at the 14-yard line. It'll be second and 10. You really got the sense from Inweir that he wanted to come out here, make a statement, uh, you know, back up his reputation. And thus far, the East has got him bottled up. They're doing a great job on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, no question about it. You can tell the physical gifts that Inware has been given and just has not been able to break loose so far from that East defense. So second and 10 as West breaks the huddle, Rubenzer will set up in the shotgun with two running backs and two receivers from the 14-yard line. And he will fake the handoff. They run the option to the right. Rubenzer will keep it. And Rubenzer out across the 15 and up to around the 20-yard line for a gain of five. It'll bring up third down. Yeah, Rubenzer was getting a lot of comparisons uh, uh, to uh, uh, Johnny Manziel, albeit not on, on that type of Heisman level, just his uh, physical presence um, and, and some of his skills on the field. And you were able to see a little bit of his nimbleness with his feet there to try and create something out of nothing. Yeah, actually here in AT&T Stadium, they're showing highlights from prior events here at uh, the stadium and right now showing Johnny Manziel highlights up there from the Cotton Bowl earlier this year. Rubenzer does have some of those similar gifts. What makes Johnny Manziel so good is that improvisation. Let's see if Rubenzer has that on third and five. He'll be under center, but first a timeout will be called by the West. The play clock running down here, and so they'll have to call a timeout. Third and five is coming up. Well, it's our great pleasure to be out here at AT&T Stadium covering this fine event, the third annual Blue-Gray All-American Bowl. There's actually another one of these games coming up in early January from Raymond James Stadium in Tampa Bay, Florida. And uh, Gus Bell and the crew getting ready for that game as well. And that will be a north versus south ball game there in Florida. Yeah, we're looking uh, forward to heading out there, you know, to Florida, you know, kind of getting a, a chance to taste a little bit of the sun and enjoy our time there. And then we've got another loaded set of kids, you know, heading to that game. So it'll be real fun to get out there and see kids like Troy Vincent Jr., um, Najee O'Hale, uh, we just got another loaded lineup uh, full of players, so we're looking forward to getting out there. Here's Rubenzer on third and five out of the timeout, and they will toss it and now run an in around. And this is 19, Jake Wittenberg on the carry, trying to find the first down and does across the 25-yard line. Great job by Wittenberg, showing great patience on that run. Waited for the hole to open and able to get the first down across the 25 to the 26-yard line. Yeah, it needed to get about five or six yards, ended up running about 16 to 20. Bottom line is moving <laughs> to change, though, and, and I'm sure that keeps Coach Mark McMillan happy on the sidelines. Interesting play call there on third down and five. To, able to get the first down to the 25-yard line. Leading 14 to seven is the West, and they've got the ball. More than halfway through this second quarter now. And Rubenzer will be in the shotgun with a four-receiver look and a running back. From the 25-yard line, snap back, Rubenzer with all day. Looks right, throws across the middle. That's way over the intended target's head, incomplete. Looking for James Maiden from Saxe. It'll be second down and 10. 
That time Maiden had found the hole in that zone, just kind of sat down in the middle of the defense. And Rubenzier unable to find him. Yeah, it's 6'3", 180. Maiden provides a nice target. I expect Rube Benzer to go back to him. They missed a connection on the first half, but it looks like they're trying to really kind of, you know, figure out, you know, what the, each one is looking for. I imagine they'll connect at some point. So the West squad will come to the line of scrimmage, second down and 10 from their 25-yard line and an eye-left formation for Rube Benzer under center. And he'll go play action, bootleg to the right, Able to elude the pressure and now will take off and steps out of bounds up at the 27-yard line. A humble gain of two there for Rubenzer. It'll be third down and about seven. They actually give him the 28 on that scramble. And third down and seven coming up. Connor Bombstead come up from his spot in the safety to greet Rubenzer not so kindly on the sidelines. Looks like they exchanged some words. We talked about it at the beginning of the show, Ryan. You know, each of these teams wants to come out there and win, and that play was indicative of that type of intensity. So here we go, third down and seven. This is where you got to be good, and the Pac-12 is on third down. And Rubenzer, the Cal commit, in the shotgun. They need the 35-yard line for the first down, four-man front for the east. Here they come, blitzing four, throw across the middle, and that is inter almost intercepted. Up around midfield, in and out of the hands of Dakota Finstad. It'll be fourth down and seven coming up. Yeah, Finstad had to go down and, and try and scoop that ball off the ground. Wasn't able to do it, but you appreciate the effort. And now the West will have to punt with Matt Mars. Mars has had a little trouble standing back there. You'd have to think that he'd settle down at some point and, and really put a leg into this thing. The East have gotten great pressure on these punts. Here they come again, and Mars does a great job to elude the pressure and gets away the kick. Takes a west bounce and is now picked up at the 44-yard line and returned up close to midfield. And that's where the East is going to start pending a penalty flag that's laying back at the 45-yard line. This may be a flag on an illegal fair catch. I'm not sure if the East signaled for fair catch, but if they did, they are not allowed to run that punt back at all. Let's wait and see what this penalty flag is. Uh, for the moment, the East is going to have good field position again, starting at around midfield. But the penalty is against them. And that's what the penalty was, the illegal fair catch, signaling fair catch, and then trying to return the punt. And so that is a delay of game penalty that will... Move the East back to the 41-yard line, and that's where they will start. Maldaner back in at quarterback. Six-foot-four product from Kansas. Interesting formation here. Maldaner in the shotgun with two running backs. No receivers in this formation. And Maldaner flips the ball out to the right, and it's caught by Malcolm Lee who sweeps the right edge across the 45 out to the 47-yard line. For a gain of six, it'll be second and four coming up. Lee with a nice hand, one-handed grab on the far side. Lucky he held on to that thing because it looked like Mal Daner threw it uh, backwards, and if he doesn't come up with that, that's a live ball. So good presence of mind to make sure that he gathers that thing and gets the ball upfield. Called Lee's name a couple of times. Very talented running back from British Columbia. Slots on both sides here for Maldaner out of the gun on second and four. And he goes straight back, looking across the middle, steps up in the pocket, throws it on the run incomplete. And the pass intended for Nico Pless from Smith High School in North Carolina. It'll be third down and about four. 
as Maldaner unable to connect on that throw. Brandon Jackson on the coverage there. He didn't make things easy on Maldaner. Had some pretty nice coverage on plus. So here comes the East, down 14 to seven. Looking at a third down and four. The snap back to Maldaner, straight drop, steps up in the pocket, wears one down the right sideline, and that is in and out of the hands of the intended target. That was Pless again, and it's going to be fourth down. Carlos Vizcaino right there on the play, gets his hands there, strips the ball free. Coach Mark McMillan's really going to be happy with his defensive back play right there, having played the position in the NFL. I know that he's going to be pumped up with, you know, his kids in the secondary delivering some big plays, especially on those last two sequences. Yeah, that was a great job by Vizcaino to jar that ball loose. Pretty good pass by Maldaner. The better defense there, and now the punt from Sean Jones. Another beautiful punt. Spiraling kick, and beautiful coverage by the East. They get down there in a hurry, and the tackle made by Winston Lee. Six-foot safety from Albany, New York, was right on the money there. Johnny on the spot to make the tackle at the 15-yard line. And that's a... 45-yard punt and nothing on the return. Devin Gray also in on the tackle, coming in uh, on cleanup duty. Great coverage, though. Not, there was nowhere for that ball to go to be returned. So the West will start with the ball at their 15-yard line. Right now nursing a 14-7 lead. And the defenses, again, have kind of strapped themselves in and played very well in this first half. Rubenzer, the quarterback, under center. Fullback behind him to the left. The deep man is Enweir, and he will take the toss and now throw an end around again, and this receiver wants to throw the ball. Does on the run. It's tipped and nearly intercepted. And let's see. I believe that was Zach Sterling who took that end around and threw the ball. Incomplete. Bit of extracurricular activity after the play, but no penalty flags. And it'll be second down and 10 for the West at their 15-yard line. Now, early in the game, Ryan, uh, West had some success running the ball be behind Spencer Hendy, 6'4", 285-pound lineman out of Round Rock, Texas. Uh, they were handing the ball off to you know, Richard Doctor and then letting, letting him get behind Hendy, and they were experiencing some success. I'd like to see them go back to that and, and see if it works for them again here just before the half. Yeah, we haven't seen much of Doctor uh, since the first quarter when he had a lot of success running in between the tackles. Not a very big running back, but very elusive. And here's a penalty flag. Let's see if they got the timeout first. It appears they did. So timeout called by the West as the play clock was winding down. 14-7 is our score from AT&T Stadium in Arlington. We're glad you're with us for our coverage of the Blue-Gray All-American Bowl. Our coverage will continue here in a moment. Take my hand and start a brand new day And together as one will start to see some change. Underneath everything we are, underneath everything we do, we are all people, connected, interdependent, united. And when we reach out a hand to one, we can influence the condition of all. That's what it means to live united. Back at AT&T Stadium here in Arlington, home of the Dallas Cowboys. But tonight, it's the home of the Blue-Gray All-American Bowl. And our coverage here on the Sportsgram Network on behalf of the Impact Football Network and Blue-Gray Football. Glad to have you along with us. And second down and 10 for the West squad in the gray jerseys going from left to right here in the second quarter. Up 14 to seven and the handoff is to Ray Foreman. And he tries left tackle and gets out to the 20 and that's about it. The tackle provided there by the East, I believe that was 38 Noah Usherwood who made the stop. Yeah, Noah Usherwood's another kid uh, from uh, Canada. Nice to see him come up and make a play and prove himself on this level. And here's Rubenzer who kept it on a play action. He's got the first down and more. 30, 35, 
and goes out of bounds at the 37-yard line. And, Sean, you talked about the Johnny Manziel-like ability of Rubenzer, and right there we saw it able to scramble out of the pocket and pick up the first down with his feet out to the 37-yard line. Yeah, Rubenzer is showing some wheels, making some things happen. Provi hopefully that uh, provides some momentum for the West, and they can keep this ball moving. And it appears the West has picked up the pace offensively here, going no huddle. Rubenzer out of the shotgun, two running backs, two receivers from the 37. And he will hand it off to Enweir. Bounced off one tackle, started right, cut left. Got out across the 40 to the 43. The ball comes loose, but Enweir was down. And Vic Enweir from Fort Bend Austin High School is able to pick up six yards. It'll bring up second down and four. Yeah, nice run there by Enware. Got behind Spencer Handy, we just talked about a few minutes ago, running off that left side, uh, and Handy opens up some holes. Real interesting kid, very humble, likable kid. Uh, has a great GPA, well above the you know 3.5 range. Any colleges out there looking for a kid who can block and takes care of business off the field in the classroom, give this guy a look. Here comes Rubenzer jogging back out onto the field. Second down and four. And he'll be in the shotgun again. Slot on the right. Gets the snap. Straight drop. Plenty of time. And loads one up down the right sideline. has got a man open at the 25. Caught and spinning off of a tackle. And scoring is Devin Stubblefield. 63-yard touchdown from Rubenzer to Stubblefield, and the West has just gone up 20-7 to here at the end of the second quarter. Yeah, nice play there by Stubblefield. Really, the, the ball kind of hung up in the air a little bit. He stayed focused, adjusted his route, got a hold of the ball, made a couple guys miss, finds himself into the end zone. Boy, and how about the size from Stubblefield? Six foot, 180 pounds is what he's listed at, but he bounced right off that tackle. And spun away, found some free space, and is able to score. And the 63-yard connection from Luke Rubenzer. And now Sean Young, or Matt Mars, I beg your pardon, in to tack on the extra point. Rubenzer gets the ball on the tee. The extra point is up and good. And here in the final moments of the second quarter from AT&T Stadium, the West squad has just gone up 21-7. Here in the Blue-Gray All-American Bowl, our coverage of this fine event on the Impact Football Network, powered by SportsGram, will continue here in a moment. Take my hand and start a brand new day. And together as one, we'll start to see some change. Underneath everything we are, underneath everything we do, we are all people, connected, interdependent, united. And when we reach out a hand to one, we can influence the condition of all. That's what it means to live united. Go back to AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. 21 to seven now the score, the West with the lead, Luke Rubenzer with his second touchdown pass of this first half, this time 63 yards to Devin Stubblefield. And the West now up 21 to seven. The only touchdown from the East is a 79 yard touchdown on a kickoff return by Lonnie Johnson. Here's the ensuing kickoff by Matt Mars. And he puts one on the ground straight up the middle. It'll be taken at the 34 yard line by one of the upbacks and returned out across the 40 to around the 44-yard line. The return by the East number 42, Chase Rudzik from Ulysses, Kansas. And he gets it out to the 44, a return of seven. It'll be first down for the East right there. And that is halftime. Here at the Blue-Gray All-American Bowl, our score, the West squad 21 and the East 7. And Corrine Lewis is standing by down on the sideline. Corrine, you take it away. All right, thanks a lot, guys. I'm here with head coach of the West, 
Mark McMillan, it's got to feel so good, Coach, going into the first half with this win. Tell us about that trick play for the TD. Well, you know, at, at first, you know, we were going to try to just run out the clock, but uh, it's an all-star game. These guys are all-American players, so we decided to take a shot and it worked for us. Obviously. So, you know, you had a really short week of preparation. How do you feel like the athletes are adjusting? I think once the, the jitterbugs uh, on both sides of the ball, once they settled into their rhythm, uh, now they're playing football, and now you're seeing some of the guys uh, make plays. All right. And who's catching your eye the most tonight? Well, I always uh, a little biased with my guy, Luke Zubenbeier, the quarterback, uh, who's making good plays, uh, made a big-time throw right there to uh, put us up 14 going into the half. All right. Well, uh, good job. Congratulations. We'll see you next. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, Corrine, thank you very much. And the West leading the East here at halftime at the Blue-Gray All-American Bowl, 21-7. And, Sean, it really seemed like the offense kind of awoke a little bit uh, there at the end of the second quarter, particularly for the West, really starting to move the ball well on offense. Yeah, it begins and ends with Luke Rubenzer, and, and he's getting the job done with his arm and his feet. You know, made a couple of plays, picked up a big first down midway through the uh, second quarter, and I think the offense started to feed off of that type of energy he provided, and he finds stubble field for a pass just before the break, and, you know, all of a sudden, you know, Mark McMillan's equipped with a 14-point lead, and, you know, maybe he unleashes his defense a little bit more, starts to put the pressure, and, you know, we'll, we'll see where this game goes in the second half, but great start for the West after, you know, getting off to a sluggish beginning. And how about that West defense not allowing an offensive touchdown in that first half. The East had a good starting field position a couple of times due to their fantastic special teams play, but the West defense uh, not breaking uh, against that East offense. Yeah, we talked about Cameron Petway in the opening, the Auburn commit, and I thought that, you know, Coach Larry Ryans might put the ball in his hands a little bit more, and, and that just hasn't been in the game plan. Perhaps they try and use that in the second half, choose some time off the clock, establish a rhythm, and, and see if that works for him. All right, well, the score at halftime, the West 21, the East 7. This is the third annual Blue-Gray All-American Bowl on the Impact Football Network. Our broadcast tonight powered by the Sportsgram Network, and our coverage will continue in a moment. But it would be safe to keep your distance until the oh, secret to make you smile. Why well, the sources say that chicken mm. soup has proven it's found their way out of this Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. That a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I've always wanted to be.
Everything we are, underneath everything we do, we are all people, connected, interdependent, united. And when we reach out a hand to one, we can influence the condition of all. That's what it means to live united. Getting an iconic look of AT&T Stadium, Jerry World as it is affectionately known as here in the Metroplex. Side of tonight's Blue Gray All-American Bowl. The score right now at halftime, the West squad with a 21 to seven lead over the East and getting a chance to see the uh, crowd out for tonight's game. Great crowd has come out here on a Sunday night to uh, witness these high schoolers play their final high school football game. Some of them will perhaps play in other uh, All-American, All-Star type games, but uh, for the most part, this will be it before these players uh, move on to the next level, many of them, and right now uh, playing very well. It's been a very entertaining first half. The defense is playing exceptionally well, and we've uh, seen some good offense as well, particularly from the west side and their quarterback, Luke Rubenzer, who had a couple of touchdown passes there in that first half. Well, the team's still back in the locker rooms making their halftime adjustments, and the uh, fans starting to file back in for the start of the second half. That's coming up here shortly from AT&T Stadium. Our coverage of the Blue-Gray All-American Bowl on the Impact Football Network, powered by Sportsgram, will continue after this. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. Face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty. Time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately. Learn the body language and spot a stroke fast. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? No, they want to help, Ow. but don't know how. Oh, you Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. But it wouldn't be safe to keep your distance until they're oh, secret. Do you smile? Why well, the sources say that chicken soup has proved has found their way out of this. <laughs>
Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Everything we are, underneath everything we do, we are all people, connected, interdependent, united. And when we reach out a hand to one, we can influence the condition of all. That's what it means to live united. at at and Stadium in Arlington. Corrine Lewis is down on the field with the head coach of the East Squad, Larry Ryans. Corrine, take it away. Hey, coach. Uh, going into the first, or coming out of the first half with being 21-7, it's got to be a little bit disappointing. But what did you do in the locker room to motivate these guys? What, what is it that you told them? Well, no, honestly, it's not too disappointing at all because we had our chances. We had opportunities. We just didn't capitalize on them. You know, it was a few things we did in the protection uh, in protection for our, where our guys broke down and they got a lot of penetration. But all in all, man, we, we hurt ourselves more than they did. 
So it's all about do what you're supposed to do, don't miss assignments, execute, and we'll be all right. I'll tell you what, I got a chance to hear you speak last night, and you are one of the most motivational people I think I've ever heard speak. So I'm sure whatever it is that you said to them in there, they got something from it. But what can we expect for, from you for the second half? The second half, I think that what you, what you can expect is a little bit more excitement, definitely better execution, and I think we're going to pull this thing out. All right, good luck to you. Have a good time. Thanks. All right, back to you guys. All right, Corrine, thank you very much. And uh, you could kind of tell that Larry Rines is not very happy uh, being down 21-7 to at halftime. His team will try to uh, make up that deficit as we get ready to start the third quarter. Yeah, Larry Ryan takes a no-nonsense approach to things, especially coaching. I mean, you, you see this guy on, on Friday night when the kids first get in, into town and, and are at the hotel, and he gets a chance to talk with them and sit down and explain what he wants done or, or what he expects from them. And, you know, you, you stumble, you know, through the lobby and then you look around and, and see who's there. And Larry Ryan's is with his coaching staff at midnight. And, you know, they're burning the midnight oil. And <laughs> Saturday night he's out there. And I say, hey, what, Coach, what time did you guys, you know, get to bed? What time did you turn in? Oh, we were up till 6 o'clock in the morning. And, you know, he's won the last two games that he's coached for the Blue-Gray All-American Bowl. And I know that he wants that third. So expect the East to come out uh, more motivated, uh, more disciplined and, and really make this thing a little bit more interesting than the 21-7 score would now indicate. Well, the West is going to get the football first. The East won the opening coin toss and elected to receive. So the West is going to send James Maiden and Devin Stubblefield back deep to return. And Sean Young will kick the ball away. I've been very impressed with the kicker from St. Petersburg, Florida for the East squad. Sean Young has been very good in the punting game and he will be the one kicking it off to begin this third quarter as soon as the E squad breaks their huddle over there on the far sideline glad to have you with us for our coverage of the third annual blue gray all-american bowl on a sunday night from at&t stadium Sean Young takes the football from the official and lines the ball up at the 35-yard line. That's a difference uh, from the Texas high school football rules as opposed to this game. Usually the ball is kicked off from the 40-yard line. Here in this All-American Bowl, we kick off from the 35-yard line. And we're ready to start the third quarter. Stubblefield and Maiden back deep to return, waiting at their 14-yard line for the kick from Young. And he approaches the football, and the third quarter is underway. High end over end kick will be taken by Stubblefield at the 14-yard line, bringing it straight up the middle, turns right 25-30, and upended at the 35-yard line. That's where the West will start, up 21-7, as the tackle was made on the east side by E.J. Moss, linebacker from Asheville, Alabama, making a special teams tackle. Yeah, I really like what E.J. Moss uh, brings to the table. We spoke a little bit about him before. Good, humble kid, family-oriented, which is something that Blue Gray football uh, really believes in, and, and I think that E.J. embraces those principles on the field. Uh, just a real, real explosive type player. Uh, makes tackles sideline to sideline, and we'll be seeing him play on Saturdays here in the near future. Coleman Key starts this third quarter at quarterback for the West squad from his 35-yard line, and no drop back, fires it across the middle. That's caught, and a first down and more into east side of the 50. That catch made by James Maiden, his first catch of the game. Coleman Key able to find him on a slant across the middle to the east 43-yard line for a first down. Nice to see Maiden get in the stat sheet, heading to Rice. Uh, he's a, a big play type of receiver, catches his little slant there at about seven yards and turns it into a 15-yard gain. Yeah, 22 yards there for Maiden to the 43-yard line. And the West has a first down on their first play of the third quarter. Back to the shotgun goes Coleman Key, slots on both sides, and a running back. Key from the gun on first down, takes the low snap, straight drop and now runs it right. 
Throws it on the run, and that is off the hands of his intended receiver and incomplete. Intended for Zach Sterling. It'll be second down and 10. Well, that was a great job improvising, though, by Coleman Key. Didn't take a stellar snap from his center, but able to improvise, roll the pocket over to the right, and really get a great arm behind that throw on the run. Yeah, that's a catchable ball. you got to come down with that on the sideline and, and keep your team uh, you know, motivated and heading in the right direction. So it'll be second and 10, ball at the 43-yard line for the West squad in the gray jerseys and blue pants, and the East squad is in the navy blue jerseys and white pants. Both teams wearing solid silver helmets. And Key will be in the shotgun here. Vic Inware, the running back to his left on second down and 10 at the 43-yard line. Snap back to Key, and they'll go on a delayed draw to Inware, and he's bottled up immediately. Great play in the backfield made by the East squad. Number 74 was one of the first there on the scene, and that was Austin Speed. No, I beg your pardon, 74 on the East. As we look up and down the roster, that is Ethan Sheets from West Wilkes, North Carolina, defensive end, making that tackle. Yeah, showed some explosiveness on the line of scrimmage, got in the backfield and made a sure-handed tackle. And a loss of five on the play brings up third down and 15. The West needs the 33-yard line for the first down. Coleman Key out of the shotgun, four-man front for the East squad. Snap back to Key. Two-step drop, and he throws it out left, incomplete. And the pass intended for number 31, Sean Jones from Jasper, Louisiana, incomplete. Fourth down coming up, and the West squad will punt it away. Yeah, Jones wide open here on the near side. If he comes down with that ball, he has some room to operate. Uh, you have to be really impressed with Coleman Key's ability to stand in the pocket, deliver the ball with velocity and accuracy. That time just unable to connect with this receiver, Jones. And now Matt Mars will punt. And the West was getting ready to fake that punt. And first, the penalty flag. They had snapped that ball to the up back, Addison Kirkland. But yep. it looks like they're going to be slapped with an illegal procedure penalty here. Yeah, that play looked like it had some potential for being real big. Uh, they're going to have to save that for a, a later time in the game, perhaps. That penalty is actually against the East squad, an illegal substitution. So that will make the uh, ball move up to the 43-yard line. Maybe if the West gets lucky here, the East didn't see that uh, attempted fake. Fourth down and about nine, and now they will punt. Mars takes the snap and gets away an end-over-end kick that will bounce straight up into the air around the 17-yard line and be killed by the uh, West squad at about the 18. So a punt of 27 yards will set up the West, or the, uh, the East, I should say, offensively at their 18-yard line, down 21-7. And they get the ball for the first time here in the third quarter. And J.W. Maldaner is in at quarterback to start the third quarter. With a snap back, and I beg your pardon, that is uh, Wyatt Porter, lefty from Helios Catholic High School in Missouri. And he completes his first pass attempt of the night. Up to the 23-yard uh, line for a gain of four to bring up second and six. Yeah, Wyatt Porter comes out, guns a blaze, and sl sl slings that ball out into the flat and, you know, picks up some positive yards. So a bit of a different look here for the East with a left-handed quarterback who goes back three steps here, fires it across the middle. That ball is incomplete, but put right on the money for the intended receiver. Lonnie Johnson unable to come up with the ball. It'll be third down and six coming up. And that's the third or fourth time that an East receiver has been all alone with a pass put uh, pretty much on the money and has been unable to come up with the catch. Yeah, at this point, you have to think that the jitters have kind of worn off and, you know, it's time to produce. 
Third and six for Porter out of the shotgun. Slots on both sides. And with a snap back on third and six, has some time, steps up in the pocket, goes down the right side of the field, incomplete. Gavin Dickin, his intended receiver. And it'll be fourth down and six, and the East squad will be forced to punt. Colin Carpenter on the coverage there. He had him blanketed. Not much room uh, to fit the ball into that window. Good defense. Now that's kind of been the story all night, Sean, is good defense from both sides. The defenses have been well ahead of the offenses here in this blue-gray All-American Bowl. And Stubblefield is going to go back deep to return. Yeah, some of that credit for the defensive effort thus far has to go for, uh, to George T, the defensive coordinator for the West. He's doing a good job of putting his positions in uh, the best places uh, to finish off. Here's the punt by Jones. It's going to take an east bounce, rolling around to the 36-yard line, and that's where it is stopped. So a 41-yard punt by Sean Young there. And it'll be first down now for the West, up 21 to seven. There have been three offensive possessions here in this third quarter, or two offensive possessions, I should say, and two punts. And now Coleman Key back into work wearing long white sleeves. Under center in an eye right formation, slot on the right. And he will go play action, the pressure, they set up the screen. It is caught by Inweir. He reverses field 30-35. Look out, he found the edge. Out across the 40 to the 43-yard line. Vic Inweir with a great play in space to turn that uh, play from chicken feathers into chicken soup for a gain of six. I like that one, Ryan. Yeah. Nothing into something. You know, that was a nice play by Inweir. We were waiting for him to, you know, flash some of that immense, uh, immense potential, and, and there was just a little glimpse right there. And uh, very under control as a running back. Vic Inweir, great vision and patience, and we saw it on that play. Took that screen pass on the right side of the offensive line, didn't like anything over there, and reverse field to the left for a gain of about six. Second and four now for Coleman Key out of the shotgun. Four receivers, takes a low snap, QB draw all the way. Key straight up the middle, first down and more. And brought down on east side of the 50 at around the 48-yard line. And that's a gain of nine yards for Coleman Key on a quarterback draw. First down west as they move the ball well here to play in the third quarter. Yeah, good instincts uh, by Key there. Gets the ball, gets, starts heading in the right direction. And, and next thing you know, west is crossing the 50-yard line. I've really liked the way that west has played with Key in there at quarterback. The... Uh, Scored their first touchdown of the game with him on the field. A touchdown pass from Inweir to Mason Sonier, the tight end on a running back pass that Key had a very key block on. Takes the snap here on first down and hands it to Doctor over the left side. And Doctor with a great burst through the line inside the 45 to the 41-yard line for a gain of seven. Richard Doctor with some strong running, not a very big guy at all, only listed at five foot nine, 185, but really a tough runner and not afraid of anything, able to pick up seven yards there. Yeah, Troy Lane came up to make the stop and Doctor lowered his shoulder, nearly ran right through him, way to finish off the play. So the West squad huddling up at around midfield they come to the line of scrimmage at the left hash of the 42-yard line. Second down and three. Key under center in an eye right formation. And they will hand it off. And Inweir slipping out of a tackle and has the first down and more. Inside move at the 30 lookout. This is exactly why this guy's going to Cal. Touchdown. 42 yards, Vic Inweir scores. And what an electrifying run that was to slip out of the arms of two would-be tacklers. And he's able to score from 42 yards away. Enwer did a lot of good things right there, Ryan. Didn't like what he saw up the middle, stopped on a dime, cut to the left, got to the outside, and no one was going to catch him from behind. Everybody in Berkeley is going to be happy once he steps foot on campus. 
Now Matt Mars with the chance at the extra point. Snap is good, it's down, it's up. And the extra point is good. 28 to seven is now our score. The West with the lead coming upon the midway point of this third quarter from AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Our coverage of the third annual Blue-Gray All-American Bowl on the Impact Football Network will continue after this. Take my hand and start a brand new day And together as one will start to see some change Underneath everything we are, underneath everything we do, we are all people, connected, interdependent, united. And when we reach out a hand to one, we can influence the condition of all. That's what it means to live united. Vic Inweer with his electrifying 42-yard touchdown run to give his West squad a 28-7 lead. Here in the third quarter of play of the Blue-Gray All-American Bowl. And now the West have scored 21 unanswered points. Here comes the ensuing kickoff from Matt Mars. And he tries an onside kick. I don't believe that ball went 10 yards before it was touched and a penalty flag flies here. There's actually two flags down on the play. And I believe they actually might both be on the west. Let's wait and see. One looks like a possible offsides. And the other looks like a procedure penalty because the onside kick did not go 10 yards. We'll wait and see what the calls are. Very interesting uh, decision there by Mark McMillan. Up 21 points to go for an onside kick. But hey, why not? Larry Ryans has won this game now two years in a row, and as we await these penalty calls, let's go down to the sideline. Corrine Lewis is standing by with Vic Inweer. I'll tell you what, I'm standing next to an extremely exciting young man. You have played amazing tonight. Tell us about throwing the pass for the trick play on that TD. Um, well, you know, I practiced it a lot. Uh, we had about a day of practice, but, you know, I did it with my team. Um, it was just a thing we threw and just to get the, uh, our team, the West, sparked up and the offense sparked up and get us going. So, I mean, it ended up working out well. Threw it out there, my tight end caught it. He did a great job, uh, you know, making an extra effort and getting to the end zone. Has this been everything you expected so far? Uh, yes, ma'am, it has. It's been, it's been a great experience so far, and uh, it's not over. You know, West team, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep working. Um, we have we got a quarter and a half still to go. He's trying to catch his breath playing so hard. All right, keep it going. All right, see you later. Thank you. All right, guys, thank you. All right, Corrine, thank you very much. And Vic Inweer. Responsible for two touchdowns tonight for the West squad, one throwing and one running. And his uh, rushing touchdown was a thing of beauty. Now the East back to work offensively. They've got great starting field position. And Wyatt Porter on the quarterback keeper over the left side, being flushed out of the pocket, loses a yard back to the 45-yard line, brings up second down and 11. Good pursuit by the East defense, making things difficult on the quarterback. And, Sean, you talked about it earlier, but, uh, boy, the folks up in Berkeley, California, have to be very excited about what they're going to get in Vic anywhere when he comes on campus, uh, either in the spring or next fall, whenever he decides to make the jump there to Cal. Here's a toss sweep on second down and 11, and the handoff to number 27 for the East. That is Brady Bodine. A number change here in the roster. Brady Bodine on the toss over the right side, able to get four yards, brings up third down and seven. But, uh, very articulate, articulate young man and uh, very good football player as well. He's gonna represent that university in California very, very well. Yeah, they have a long line of, of running backs there in Cal and it would seem that Enware was some of the things that we've seen tonight as a potential to go in there, you know, and perhaps join the ranks of, of some of those players before him, Javid Best, uh, you know, for one, uh, Marshawn Lynch. He's got a long ways to go, but, you know, Vic Enware has shown some really nice things tonight. False start penalty here against the East. We'll back them up to third down and 12. 
Actually closer to 13 here. So third and 13 for the East, and things are starting to slip away for Coach Larry Ryan's squad, down 28-7 here in the third quarter. And they desperately need to pick up this third down and about 12 and a half. Porter is in the shotgun. Three receivers to the left side of the formation. Back three steps, hit as he throws. This ball is up in the air, and it is picked off at the 37-yard line and returned to midfield, 45-40. And the interception made by the linebacker there for the West squad, I believe number 34, Darian Dukit from Fresno, California with the return to the East 38-yard line. And Porter there hit as he threw, really had no chance for a completion there. Yeah, linebacker was kind of playing center field. Ball fell right into his arms, had the presence of mind to get up field. All of a sudden, West appears to be in business. 37-yard line of the East. So now the West, as I mentioned, they've scored 21 unanswered. And they're going back to work at the East 38. First, a penalty flag. And this is going to be against the West. Well, that will back them up to the 43-yard line, make it first and 15. An illegal substitution there against the West. And those are the kind of penalties that you can expect in a game like this. Again, the practice time very limited for these two teams. And despite all that, as we mentioned, the bonds that have been created over the, you know, two, three, four days that these players have been together, not to mention the, the combines, that doesn't include the regional combines that they go through together. The bonds that they've created are very strong. And now Coleman Key with his team up 21 in the third quarter comes under center from the 43-yard line and picks up the snap. Hands it to Doctor, and Doctor is wrapped up like right now in the backfield for a loss. And I believe... Skyler Hurlson on the tackle. Yep, you're right. Broke through the line of scrimmage. Saw Doctor within his arm's reach. Made a sure hand to tackle again. So that's going to back the West up big time here. Bring up second down at about 20. Back at the 48-yard line. Yeah, they're heading in the right, wrong direction right now. You have to believe that this is a play to pick up, you know, 10, 12 yards, have a manageable third down thereafter. See if they try to set up a screen maybe to Doctor. He's the running back. Key out of the shotgun with four receivers. And he'll go straight drop and middle of the field is open. He'll take off. Key gets to the outside and gets inside the 40 to around the 35-yard line. And, Sean, you called it. They picked up close to 13 yards on that run by Coleman Key. There is a penalty flag down at the end of the run. And pending that call, it'll be third down and about eight. Yeah, Coleman getting to the outside, running behind Spencer Hendy. We've called his name before. Offensive lineman continue to get the job done at the, uh, at the initial point of contact. And it's actually a holding call against the defense. Something you don't see a whole, lot of, a whole lot of at all, and that's an automatic first down for the West. And it's going to move the ball all the way down to the 20-yard line. A spot of the foul call there. And the West have it first down at the East 20. Going in to score right to left. Straight eye for Coleman Key under center. Doctor is the deep back. They'll hand it to him, trying right guard, and he found a hole and slung down pretty nicely there by Spencer Hulse, or Skyler Hulse, again, I should say. Skyler Hulse, six foot three defensive end from Oak Grove, Missouri, with the tackle. Doctor able to pick up five. It'll bring second and five up for the West squad here. Third quarter action of the Blue Gray All American Bowl, and the West with the ball and the lead, 28 to 7. Coach for the West, Mark McMillan, with a lot of weapons at his disposal. You know, you have Vic Enware, you bring him in, and he gets some things done. He goes to the sideline and takes a blow, and you bring in Richard Doctor, and there's no drop-off in production. So second down at the 16-yard line. They need five for the first down. And Key is under center. Doctor the deep back. 
Two receivers to the right for Key. And he will toss it to Doctor, who now gives the end around to Wittenberg, I believe this is. And he's going to keep the ball inside the 10 to around the 6-yard line. Jake Wittenberg on the carry on the end around. That's a play that they've run three or four times tonight, and each time they've had success. This time a first down to the seven. It'll be first and goal for the West. Winston Lee comes up and makes the tackle, preventing him from reaching the end zone. Nice play from the defensive back from New York. And the West have been very good inside the 10-yard line. They've had it down there twice and have scored both times. Key with three running backs now. Doctor is the deep man. No receivers in this formation for Key under center. First and goal at the eight. And he'll hand it to Doctor, coming straight ahead, bounces off a tackle, turns left at the seven, and falls forward to around the four-yard line. Strong run again by Doctor to pick up four. It'll bring up second and goal. Yeah, he's wrapped up there by Gary Stauffer. Sees Doctor heading in his direction and slows down his momentum. And Doctor again bouncing off tackles. And just doing a great job of downhill running. And that's a funny thing to say for a guy listed at 5'9", 185, but likes to run in between the tackles, and that's where they're giving him the ball. He's the deep man again on second and goal at the 5. Key under center with a snap and another handoff to Doctor. Started right, cut left, end zone, touchdown. Richard Doctor. And Doctor in the end zone for the second time tonight. Puts the West up 34-7 here in the third quarter. Ryan, how many times have I called the name Spencer Hendy? He breaks another key block, springs Doctor for a touchdown. And Larry Ryan from the East has got to do something about stopping this onslaught that we're now seeing from the West. Yeah, Hendy at 6'4", 285, just a beast on the left side of that offensive line. And now the West trying to tack on the extra point. They've only got 10 out there on the field. They're waiting for somebody. Rubenzer, the holder, didn't have his helmet on. And they have to call timeout here. So timeout called by the West. Before the point after, attempt will take the timeout as well. From the AT&T Stadium in Arlington, the score 34-7. The West with the lead. Our coverage will continue in a moment. Yes, I am. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? They want to help, but don't know how. Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Back here at AT&T Stadium. The uh, West squad about to attempt the extra point here with Matt Mars. And try to go up by four touchdowns here in the third quarter. The kick is up, and it is good. And now the score, the West 35 and the East 7. The East have yet to score an offensive touchdown in this blue-gray All-American Bowl. Their only touchdown coming back in the first quarter, a 79-yard kickoff return for a touchdown by Lonnie Johnson. And Sean, Richard Doctor getting into the end zone for the second time tonight. He caught a touchdown pass earlier from Luke Rubenzer and now a five-yard touchdown run here in the third quarter. What have you liked from Richard Doctor so far tonight? Uh, he's low. Uh, he has a low center of gravity, so, you know, he's, you know, maybe hiding behind the offensive line, and, you know, by the time he gets to that second level, he uses that burst of speed to get upfield. Had a great senior season up in uh, northern, northern, more central California, and, is continuing that here today in the uh, AT&T Dallas Stadium. Yeah, and uh, you know, you kind of get in the habit of comparing a lot of smaller running backs to a guy like Darren Sproles, but Doctor does remind me a lot of 
uh, Darren Sproles' game, really small. And as you said, uh, Sean, low center of gravity, catches the ball well out of the backfield and has excellent speed, but uh, runs the ball a bit tougher than someone like Darren Sproles might. And a great prospect out of Lemoore, California. Here yep. comes the ensuing kickoff for the West. High end over end, and it sends Johnson back deep to the 10. He'll bring it out 15, 20, 25. Look out again, 35, 40. Spins off one tackle, 45, 50. Still going 45, 40. Finally brought down inside the 35-yard line. The touchdown saving tackle made by Sebastian Swift from Christian, California. And Lonnie Johnson is just a guy you don't kick the ball to. Yeah, he's made some big things happen today on special teams. Credit Sebastian Swift with the tackle while everybody else is watching Johnson get loose. He's making plays happen at the end of things and preventing uh, more yardage, perhaps even a touchdown at that point. Boy, Johnson looked like he might have been wrapped up back around the 45 or midfield, but able to spin off a tackle and just a great return. Sets up the East squad at the West 35-yard line, and they'll give it to Petmore on... This first down carry, or Petway, I should say. And the Auburn commit goes straight up the middle to around the 31-yard line for a gain of six. And just didn't really see a whole lot of Petway in that first half. Let's see if they get him involved offensively here in the third quarter. Porter out of the gun. And they'll hand it again to Petway, this time wrapped up nearly immediately. And the tackle made on the play by Zach Singer from Bishop Gorman, Nevada. No gain on the play for Petway. Brings up third down and a long six. Cameron Dwan also in there on the tackle. 6'2", 265 out of Arizona. And uh, Cameron Petway getting the first two carries on this offensive possession. Now has the East backed up at third and seven. Three to the right, one left. And Porter will take the snap, no drop back, fires it out right incomplete. And that pass intended for Lonnie Johnson. Porter threw it a bit low. It'll be fourth down and seven. We've got Corrine Lewis down on the sideline. We're going to get to her as soon as we can. And let's see what the East is going to do here. Down 28 in the third quarter. The ball's at the 31-yard line, and so they're going to go for it in need of seven yards. To get the first down, they need to get to the 25 yard line. Johnson is slot on the right, three receivers that way, and Porter is gonna look that way. They throw the screen, it's caught, and brought down shy of the first down as the receiver, Gavin Dickin, stopped at the 26 yard line, about a yard short of the first down, and the West defense is able to hold. They'll take over on downs. Let's send it down down to the sideline with Corrine Lewis who's standing by with Richard Doctor. I am here guys with Richard Doctor from Lemoore, California. You've been so exciting to watch tonight. Tell us about your week so far and how everything's gone for you. Uh, it's been good. I met a lot of cool guys. I mean the majority of them are committed so I know I'm playing with the best of the best. Future D1 stars possibly and uh, they're cool people just down to earth. It's talking about football all the time and I've been rooming with them. We've been playing just hanging around having a good time. Great. And what's your most memorable experience standing here at AT&T Stadium? Oh, playing in one of the best stadiums in the country, period. NFL, college, I mean, this is the best of the best. Oh, that's awesome. And so uh, what can we expect from you at the end of the game? Um, I'm definitely going to give it all I can, whether I go back in or not. I mean, I always walk off the field knowing I gave 100%. So. Well, I've gotten to talk to you a few times this week. You have an amazing attitude. You're all heart. You have a great work ethic. And there's going to be great things for you to come. All right. Have a good time. Thanks. Thanks, Ryan. All right, Corrine. Thank you very much. And on that first down play for the West, another one of their smaller running backs, Zachary Mitchell, listed at just five foot eight, able to run over an East defender for a first down and a gain of 11 out to the 36 yard line, delivered a punishing blow at the end of that run. And it's a first down for the West. Up 35-7. I believe we are still in the third quarter of play. Again, the scoreboard's not operational tonight at AT&T Stadium. They're keeping the time down on the field. And here's the first down snap to Coleman Key. 
And they run the read option to the right side and the pitch to Foreman. And Foreman's able to get back to the line of scrimmage and maybe a yard or two more up to the 38-yard line for a gain of two. We'll bring up second down and eight. East defense has got to come up with a stop, create a turnover, change the momentum of this game. Can't let uh, skepticism set in at this point. There's still some time left. Get ready to head to the fourth quarter. It's now or never for the East, though. Yeah, probably in the final moments of the third quarter, I believe it's about to come to an end. And the West with a commanding lead over the East here in this blue-gray All-American Bowl. The score at the end of the third quarter, West 35, East 7. Our coverage of this third annual blue-gray All-American Bowl will continue in a moment. Start of the fourth quarter, and the first play is Luke Rubenzer keeping the ball over the left side on a quarterback keeper, 35-30, 25-20, and Rubenzer inside the 10-yard line on a huge gain to start this fourth quarter. Luke Rubenzer able to pick up a first down and much more inside the East 10. It'll be first and goal for the West. Troy Lang with the touchdown saving tackle, but we... Talked about Rubenzer before, getting it done with his feet and his arm, and, and that time he takes off down the far side and ends up inside the 10-yard line, and go figure, the West is in business again. And that was a very good run from Rubenzer. Great blocking on the left side of that offensive line for the West. Spencer Hendy again with the uh, spurring block. And now the West... Up 35 to seven, have first and goal from the eight. Rubenzer will come under center with three running backs. Mitchell is the deep guy. Rubenzer with a snap, he'll hand it to Mitchell, coming straight up the middle and spinning forward to the five and down to the three yard line. Good second effort from Mitchell right there. Both of these smaller running backs for the West, really strong runners when you talk about Doctor and Mitchell. That time Mitchell able to turn uh, no gain into about five yards, brings up second and goal at the three. A lot of interchangeable pieces for Coach Mark McMillan and his staff, and kids are well prepared and delivering. Rubenzer walking to the line of scrimmage. West in no hurry, up 35-7. to seven. Mitchell again, the deep back. And they'll hand it to him again, trying the left side, and the East has it plugged up pretty well this time. Maybe a yard. It'll be third down and goal coming up. And coming up off that pile to making the tackle was uh, number 38, Noah Usherwood, their six foot two linebacker from British Columbia. That's a good segue into. Uh, what we wanted to talk about earlier, Gus Bell really trying to open up uh, up there in Canada because he's going to start some combines up there in the uh, next year or so. Yeah, we're looking uh, forward to really heading up north and seeing what Canada has to offer. Uh, it seems like there's a lot of talent, most of it, you know, untapped at this point. But, you know, we're going to go out there with our camps and combines and, you know, see what they have to offer. And Zachary Mitchell takes the ball into the end zone for a touchdown from three yards away. 
Zachary Mitchell scores. It's the third rushing touchdown of the game for the West squad. And they are now up 41 to seven with the extra point still to come. Boy, what a game it's been for the West offense. Putting the ball in the end zone six times. And now the extra point from Matt Mars to come. Mars gets the kick away, it's up, and it goes off of the upright, no good. So the kick from Mars is no good, he missed the extra point. And so the score will stay at West 41, East 7. And about 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter here from Arlington, our coverage of the Blue-Gray All-American Bowl. No, I beg your pardon, we've got uh, an interview down on the field. Corrine Lewis is with Patrick Mahomes, quarterback of White House High School here in the state of Texas. Corrine, let's hear from Patrick. Patrick, how much fun have you been having since you've been here so far? Uh, it's a lot of fun. I get to meet a lot of people. Uh, I've been rooming with another quarterback, Luke, and uh, he's a cool guy, and we've kind of hung out and got to know each other, and it's a great experience. It's good. Now, what made you choose Texas Tech? Um, just the coaching staff and how cool the town is. It's like a family up there, and that's just a big thing for me is kind of go out there, and I know I'll be uh, welcome there. You will be, and you're going to be in great company, but – you are one of the highest touted quarterbacks actually in the country. How does that feel and what does that mean to you? Uh, it's a great feeling to know that I'm kind of getting recognized for all my hard work I put in. And uh, I, it'll be interesting to see how it goes to Tech. I mean, they have young quarterbacks there, but I'm um, going to go out there and compete and uh, see where, how it ends up. Now, you got injured and you got injured playing basketball. How did you do that? Uh, I was going in to get a rebound and stepped on a dude's ankle and. Uh, I actually a high ankle sprain. I mean, it's not too bad, but they're not letting me play in this game. I was disappointed in that, but uh, I'll be back, and I'll be back uh, healthy. Oh, that's good. Well, we wish you were out there playing, but we look forward to seeing you in the upcoming years of Texas Tech, and uh, appreciate you taking the time for us. No All right. Thank you, Ryan. Back to you. Thanks, Corrine, and Thanks. thank you, Patrick. Uh, Patrick Mahomes. Very talented quarterback, actually got a chance to witness his last high school football game at White House High School, and Boy, what a fantastic day he had in that game and a losing effort throwing six touchdowns, 585 passing yards, and just a guy that has all the throws, especially the deep balls. And uh, Texas Tech is going to be very, very lucky to have him with Cliff Kingsbury down there in Lubbock. Caleb Arnold is back in the game at quarterback for the East squad. And on second down, he unleashes a throw up the right sideline incomplete. And that will bring up second down. I beg your pardon. That was a first down play. So Arnold back in there at quarterback, the six foot one, 205 pounder from Derby, Kansas. Saw him in the first couple of offensive series for the East squad earlier in the first quarter. But, uh, Patrick Mahomes, very good quarterback, on his way to Texas Tech to play in that system for King Cliff Kingsbury. There's a penalty flag. It's an illegal substitution against the East, and they'll be backed up second and 15 now. Little known fact about the West, um, number 48, Shai Anderson, uh, is on the roster. He's actually the grandson of Jerry Jones, so he's kind of coming and playing football in our Blue-Gray All-American game and in his uh, you know, grandpa's house. So it would be interesting to see if he can come, come in and you know, make a couple of plays. We're keeping an eye on number 48. Down there on the sideline right now, taking a knee at around the 36-yard line. Here's Arnold, and he will hand it off to Jonathan DeMint from Jefferson City, Missouri. And DeMint takes the ball over the right side for a couple of yards, back to around the original line of scrimmage to bring up third down and a long 10. Glad to see Jonathan DeMint's in there. Coaching staff for the East also made mention of him quite a bit during this past week. See if he can loosen things up and, and maybe break one with his sub-4-5 speed. Third down now. The East needs the 42-yard line for the first down. And Arnold will be in the shotgun. Two receivers in this formation. And the snap back, they'll go play action. Arnold's got time, throws it right, and that ball's incomplete. Off the hands of his intended target, that was Lonnie Johnson, who is unable to come up with another catch. 
It's going to be fourth down and 11, and the East squad will punt it away. Devin Stubblefield will go out to return the Sean Young punt. Young has been a busy man for the East squad today and has failed to disappoint in any of his attempts so far today. He is a great weapon for whichever college has the fortune of having him as their punter next year. Gets away another beauty, end over end, and Stubblefield takes it at the 38-yard line, returning it backwards, 30. Now slips out of a tackle and gets back to around the 38. A return of nothing. And the West squad will start up at around their 40-yard line. Special teams have played a big role in today's game. The West has had, aside from that return, not much there for Stubblefield to work with. But aside from that, Coach Keith Lewis has done a great job with, you know, kind of, you know, getting his kids to understand some of the principles on maybe not the most glamorous position, you know, but they've been doing a good job of maintaining their responsibilities and, and gaps like what Keith Lewis has done with this group. So here's the West squad up 41-7 in the fourth quarter. And Rubenzer is back in there at quarterback. Strong eye right formation. And he will hand it off to Foreman, trying the right guard. Gets across the 40 to around the 41-yard line. Gain of one. Ray Foreman from Rusk, Texas, 5'11". The running backs have really impressed for the West squad here tonight. Vic Enweir and Richard Doctor with a couple of touchdowns. Zachary Mitchell with a touchdown as well. Enweir on the sideline right now throwing some passes to Devin Stubblefield, showing us some of his arm strength that he uh, displayed on that touchdown earlier in the first half. Rubenzer in the shotgun. They'll run the option to the left. Rubenzer will keep it. Reverses field back to the right. Still on his feet. 45 midfield. And falls forward for a first down to the east 46-yard line. And Rubenzer with great improvisation to reverse field, make a great cut back to the right. And he's got the first down onto the east side of the 50. Offensive coordinator for the West, Vernon Turner, doing a great job. Everything he's dialing up is working tonight. You can imagine he's probably in the headset saying, uh, let's dial up number 13. <laughs> let's see what that guy can do. Luke Rubenzer has done a great job tonight, more so with his feet than his arm, but you would probably expect that to be the case. Not a lot of time to get any type of chemistry with these receivers. And Rubenzer in the shotgun now will hand it off. And this is Foreman again. Started left, turns right at the 40 to the 38-yard line. Brought down shy of the first down. And it's going to bring up second down and about two after an eight-yard gain for Foreman on first down. Yeah, appears to be Foreman's series here. Thick Enware score. Doctor's got a couple touchdowns. Mitchell found the end zone. Wouldn't be surprised to see Foreman end up with six at the end of this drive. Boy, and that offensive line for the West squad has just wore down the defensive line for the East. You can kind of see them down there with their hands on their hips. They are tired. And, uh, the West has committed to the run. That's part of the reason they've got this big lead. Rebenzer from the gun, second down and about two. And he will hand it off to Doctor. Started up the middle, tried to bounce it outside and bottled up pretty nicely by the front seven of the East. And in to make the stop was E.J. Moss along with number 90, John Michael Edwards from Montgomery, Alabama. Brought Doctor down shy of the first down, brings up third down and about one for the West. Third down and about half of a yard. Foreman is the deep back. Strong eye right. Two receivers for the West in this formation. 
Rubenzer with a snap, hands it to Foreman, and Foreman is going to be brought down from behind, shy of the first down. Great play made by the East right there. That play made by Skyler Holes. He's been all over the place tonight for the East, making another tackle right there and was assisted by John Michael Edwards again. It's going to be fourth down, and the West is going to punt it away. The East will have Michael Fellers from Miami East High School in Ohio back to return the punt from the 10-yard line. Sean Young has been brilliant tonight at pinning the opponent inside the 20-yard line. Low snap, Young picks it up, gets a high end over end kick. It'll be taken by Fellers at the 10, returns it up the left sideline, stays in bounds at the 25 across the 30, and finally knocked out of bounds up near the 35 yard line. Return of 25 yards there for Michael Fellers. And that brings the ball out to around the 35 yard line, first down for the East. Probably midway through this fourth quarter or so, 41 to seven, the West with the lead. And let's see it, try to get a read on who's in there at quarterback, looks like Maldaner is back in there for the East. He keeps it over the right side, and that was not a great decision. He runs into a brick wall of gray jerseys. Led right there by number 14, I believe that was, making the tackle. Actually, might have been 44, Addison Kirkland. And the uh, second down play here. A handoff to the running back, Brady Bodine. Not much of the gain there, brings up third down and six. Yeah, at this point, offensive coordinator for the East, Cozy Coleman, has got to be thinking to himself, you know what, we, we just got to get maybe one play, uh, one chance to, you know, bust something open, you know, just to keep these kids interested in this game. I, I know that more than anything, they like to get on a, the scoreboard here. And Maldaner floats one up on the right sideline into double coverage, and that ball is caught by Malcolm Lee at the 32-yard line. What a throw by Maldaner, and Lee able to come back to the ball and make the catch in front of the coverage for a big gain and a first down to the West 32-yard line. There you go, Cozy Coleman. That worked out well, huh? So a first down now for the East. This might be the closest they've been to the end zone all night, Maldaner. And intended for Johnson once again incomplete. Off the hands of Lonnie Johnson brings up second down and 10. And Johnson's had a couple of really good returns on special teams. Unfortunately, has had a couple of uh, opportunities pass him by on offense to make a couple of catches. Uh, Lonnie Johnson, a good player from Merrillville, Indiana. And now Maldaner out of the shotgun, second and 10 at the 32-yard line. And they will hand it off to Bodine again. Tries to spin off a tackle and can't. And Zach Singer able to wrap him up, and it looks like they just got Mark McMillan with the Gatorade bath on the sideline. Yeah, Vic Enware and Devin Stubblefield were involved in that dousing of McMillan with the 41-7 lead. The seems, pre seems pretty safe. The advantage appears to be safe. Third down and 11. Now Daner back to throw. He's got some time hit as he throws, and that ball is caught by Johnson this time up at the 25-yard line. Pretty nice job to hang on there in very tight quarters. Had three guys bearing down on him. 
And it's going to be about fourth and two. You would imagine the East will go for it here. Yeah, Johnson climbed the ladder on that one. Got his mitts on the ball, juggled it a little, but maintained his concentration and came down with the rock. Roger Mann, among others, bearing down on him, making the tackle. Fourth down and about three. And timeout will be called here by the East. Fourth down and two coming up. The West leading the East 41-7. Our coverage of the Blue-Gray All-American Bowl here from AT&T Stadium will continue after this. Back here at AT&T Stadium in Arlington, the Blue-Gray All-American Bowl. We're glad you're with us. Watching on our tape-delayed broadcast. Fourth down and about two for the East squad down 41 to seven late in the fourth quarter. And Maldaner out of the gun, there will go QB draw. And Maldaner looked like he was bumped backwards shy of the first down. Roger Mann delivering the punishing blow to stop Maldaner short of the first down and West takes over the football. What a play by Roger Mann, the middle linebacker. The spy on Maldaner, they're able to make the play and it'll be West football. Yeah, man, with the big play right there, delivering a great blow, got the crowd up to its feet. Good center, stayed low and, and really drove through the quarterback to finish things off. So again, not exactly sure how much time is left here in the fourth quarter, but I would say probably three to four minutes left or so. So a chance for the West to uh, take down this clock all the way up 41-7. And you know, honestly, taking a look at the rosters for these respective teams, this might be a little bit of what you would expect in a game like this. The uh, West squad loaded with athletes from Texas and California and Louisiana. Typical hotbeds for high school football here in the United States. Yeah, when you're talking about those three regions, you get some of the premier players year in and year out. And Rubenzer will take the snap and take a knee. So not exactly sure how much time is left, but apparently there is uh, not enough for the West to uh, have another offensive possession. And they'll take a knee on first down and let the clock run. So a great game played tonight by both teams. The West defense does not allow an offensive touchdown. The only score for the East coming on a 79-yard kickoff return for a touchdown by Lonnie Johnson, and that is just very impressive. Out of the West squad, coached by Mark McMillan and the defensive coordinator, George Teague. Yeah, Coach Teague knows a little bit of something about playing defense here in, in Dallas. So Absolutely. He got the job done tonight. Just an outstanding overall effort from the West. And, and give the East the credit. You know, they didn't quit, and, and they attempted to maintain intensity through the end, and that's what you like to see. And, uh, you know, the outcome of the game obviously means nothing, but the competitive spirit in all of these players wanted to come out and win this game, and that will happen for the West. And for the East, they'll just have to settle for coming out and making a name for themselves in the recruiting trail if they have not already committed somewhere. Yeah, we had a chance to look at some really good players. I think Spencer Hendy, uh, the offensive lineman, played really well, did a good job. The two kids uh, uh, from Canada, Noah Usherwood and Malcolm Lee, uh, showed well. Caleb Arnold for the East did some good things initially. And, you know, we talked about Rubenzer and, and Enware, and they did a great job. And Devin Stubblefield, just a Really, really great show put on by Gus Bell and Blue Gray football here this evening. No doubt about it. 
And there it is, the final score here tonight. The West defeats the East 41 to seven. And at least for another year, Mark McMillan has the bragging rights over Larry Ryans in this game. 41 to seven, the final, the West win it. And uh, Sean, I know there was a lot to talk about tonight, a lot of different players that we went through, but who in your mind stuck out the most? Who would be your player of the game here in tonight's game? Well, you know, I really believe that Vic Enware did a lot of things well between catching the ball out of the backfield and a couple opportunities on the trick play. He throws a touchdown pass uh, and then really so, showed some special running ability. Uh, the Cal commit was one of the guys we wanted to keep an eye on, and he did not disappoint with his effort. No, not at all. A 46-yard touchdown run, also had a touchdown pass early in the game. And Vic Enware, the... Running back headed to Cal, along with his quarterback, Luke Rubenzer. Both of those players uh, having a great night. They're going to have a fantastic running attack up there out of the Pac-12. And uh, several other players really showing out well here tonight. Again, the final score, the West defeats the East 41-7. And we are trying right now to have a word with the winning head coach, Mark McMillan, down on the sideline. We'll hopefully have him shortly. But uh, as these players head off onto the recruiting trail, again, uh, National Signing Day in February, and uh, what, what usually happens? Take us through kind of that, uh, that lifestyle of a recruit from now until that, that day in February. What kind of goes on in the life of a player being recruited to college? Well, for example, we'll talk about a player like Sean Young in the special teams, and, and, you know, he had some good punts here tonight. And, you know, with a lot of eyes on him, you know, he kind of delivers. So, you know, you find a player like that maybe off the beaten path, and, you know, he comes out here and, and shows well, and word starts to spread about him, uh, and interest starts to pick up. What happens in the recruiting game a lot of times is, you know, you'll have these kids make decisions, and as signing day becomes closer, you know, they'll kind of flip or, you know, maybe want to go somewhere else or take a recruiting trip, and, and then they get swayed, and that creates other opportunities. I think we talked about E.J. Moss, um, a, a prime player who has three or four offers right now, but with the SCC coming and calling him, depending on how some other recruits, uh, things work out with him, I think that he lands with a big program. And, you know, a kid like Spencer Hendy, maybe he gets a couple additional looks like tonight. Uh, I just think overall the blue-gray uh, football is doing a lot for these young kids, giving them opportunities they wouldn't have otherwise. And a lot of credit goes to Gus Bell for putting together a great staff with these coaches and uh, just a commendable job overall by everyone involved with Blue Gray football. Yeah, no question about it. And uh, it's a little less than a month away, but uh, tell us what you can about the game coming up in Tampa on January the 11th, the uh, next Blue Gray All-American football game on January the 11th from Raymond James Stadium. Yeah, we're looking to get inside Raymond James Stadium and, you know, we have uh, 50 guys on each side, a lot of high-profile recruits, some of the guys that you haven't really heard about. And I think that everyone's going to come out there, go show out, and, and really prove that they, one, belong on this field. They did the hard work to put it in. And then once given the opportunity, you know, just go out there, have fun, uh, build a community. Blue Gray football is really about community and family. And I think that, uh, you know, that's something that you see in right now, all the kids are down on the field with the coaching staff and praying. You know, we're a real tight-knit family here. And, you know, we want to reach out and help families and kids, you know, enjoy experiences like this, you know, moving forward, not only here, you know, we plan to go to Canada and just expect big things from Blue Gray football moving forward. And a nice moment out at midfield as you mentioned, Sean, all the players coming together for a time of prayer. And now it appears that uh, Corrine is getting ready down on the field. Hopefully we'll have Mark McMillan here shortly as the players break up and what a fantastic experience once again for all of these high school players playing their final high school game here on the uh, hallowed grounds of AT&T Stadium just a fantastic experience and it uh, appears as the teams disperse it doesn't look like we're going to be able to get Mark McMillan so that'll be uh, that'll be fine but uh, Mark will certainly uh, take this 41 to 7 win here tonight and uh, what a great experience for these players. It was a great experience for us as well. Uh, very happy about this partnership that Sportsgram has entered into with the Impact Football Network and the Blue Gray uh, football games. And uh, happy to call this game, Sean. Excellent job as my color commentary partner tonight. And uh, we saw a good football game. 
and uh, hope to see another one uh, here in the future. Yes, we'll have to get back together in the booth very soon, Ryan. All right, that will about wrap up our coverage here from AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Once again, the final score of this Blue-Gray Ameri All-American Bowl. The West Squad defeats the East 41-7. to And for everyone at SportsGram and our fine coverage, until next time, so long, everybody.